And when you say I'm stormless, I was waiting for Mark to say, not anymore, if I can help it, and then just boss music I'm would start to play. Man. I'm not a weatherman, sir. I wish I was. Just, just kicks the door down. Not anymore, I'm not. <laughs> Hi, Billy Mays here. Yeah, Billy Mays here. Can I offer you this storm? Storm in room. a bottle. I've been reading the Stormlight Archive books, and the word storm is just completely... Just it's different context out of, for you, yeah. Out of my vocabulary. It's just, they, they say it so much. By the way, Connor, Storm I'm... this, storm that, storm you. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I was going to say, I actually bought all of the uh, aud the Audible books because I had Money? a shit ton of... Huh? Money. Yeah. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Were you the first person to say the funny fuck word a few seconds into the video? I believe she was. Oh, oh wow. wow. Oh, wow. I'm going to YouTube prison. I'm sorry. I can't well, believe you got us. It's fine. I've been there a couple Monty. times. The East that Coast guy. Sign. Yo, I love, that, I love that guy just ready to break me out of YouTube jail. He just pulls like, out, like, the, it's the, like the lock bitch. picking tool. Bitch, Ghibli's put me in there like four times. I know how to get out. He just pulls no, out all different. Out. That's not the saying the funny uh, swear word in the first he, minute crowd. He, he just he just like pulls out a Rolodex full of like people he has to talk to to get you out of out of YouTube. All right, jail. we're gonna need to talk to Mingle the Maze. We've got uh, Switch Larry. All, right. all right, I'm gonna pull out my moist critical card here. We'll put that one in there. For you. <laughs> We're gonna set you oh up with a God. double, don't worry about it. <laughs> the unexpectables got fucking honed. One second. <laughs> oh, Monty Glue to the second. Third? The second. The third, the thank third. you. The third. You. The Let's th talk yeah, about it. Let's swear third. word. <laughs> it's just, it's just like you, you correct him, you correct him for like a split second, he just stops, looks at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the one. And so, Moist Critical Charlie will never be on Unexpectables as a guest, ever. Oh, come Damn. on. We only... Listen, if I've learned anything, it's that people make fun of other people because they like them. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I make fun of people all the time because I love them. I'm yeah, I make fun water, of myself Connor. every day. Wait. Indeed. We should get uh, Philip DeFranco on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what the Buck makes his grand return. Give uh, all the intros and just jump right into it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome to the Expectables, everybody. Let's let's go around the horn and introduce ourselves. Gaijin, where can they find you? What are you up to? You always start with me. Uh, yeah. You find me at twitch.tv slash Gaijin Goomba every Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so I played the new Double Dragon game, and I liked it for a little while. And then they introduced a lot of Instant Death Pits, which is like the biggest cardinal sin of side-scrolling beat-em-ups. Uh, Zito, you have introduced me to a lot of shoot games that I need to get into. So, I don't know. I, I'm a hair's breadth away from rebranding myself as just a shooting streamer. Because I keep defaulting to those anyway, plus I'm I'm mostly there with, uh, with, with the persona that I have. But, um, aside from that, uh, I dropped, oh god, uh, literally a week ago, uh, dropped a new video. Uh... I forgot what it was about. Oh my god, my brain. Give me a minute. <laughs> I've been I've been working. Oh yeah. So talk about the ninja boom of the 90s, 80s, how it happened, why we love it, and why it's a terrible lie. Uh it's it, that was a lot of fun to put together just because I got to go back that far. New video is just me talking about why I love orcs and why they gave me eight life lessons that everybody should learn. It has nothing to do with cultural analysis or Japan. But if you want to see me like wig out over something I love. There you go. But uh yeah, no, the docket dwells very, very heartily within me, so it, it that very well might be a thing. Egg salad. I'm also hungry. I think my medicine literally just wore off all at once, and I, I've got the sniffles now, so <laughs> are you the sick I apologize for that in advance. Uh Mark Allen Jr., where can they find you? What are you up to? Oh my god, I'm up to so much. You can find me on Twitter.com at Mark Allen Jr. Here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming. And you can follow the adventures of my fat sleepy cat bunny on Instagram at chonk for life uh, Earlier this week, I released a remix that I've been working on for over a year. Uh, I did tweet about it. It's also on my SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash IMAJ hyphen two. Uh, all the good names were taken, but... Um, 
You can find me. I posted about it on Twitter. You can find it there. Also, uh, I've got a voice acting class coming up. Uh, yes, that's hey. right. I'm going to be teaching a workshop Ooh. on character and scene study for anime and video games. Uh, that's going to be on September 23rd from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, more on that on my Twitter as well. It's going to be hosted by Strawberry Hill Music. Uh, so you can check them out on Twitter. You'll be able to find their announcement there as well. And also uh, watch the English dub of My Tiny Senpai. I play Shinozaki, the main dude in that. Uh, if you like your anime dubbed, enjoy. If you like your anime subbed, enjoy the original anyway, because it's kind of cute sometimes. Um, and then Friday, I'll be doing my uh, three-hour music challenge number five. We did number four on Saturday because I had a really busy week, so it was really late to getting to it, but we did it. I made a drum and bass track for the first time in like seven years, which was awesome. Uh, the mixing's not great, but I only had three hours to do it, so there you go. When's beat core? It's not on the wheel yet. But, Where's uh, speed core? <laughs> Where's speed core, dude? Give me that speed core. Hundred. The only reason why I, because I, uh, I already do hardcore. I don't like speed core because it's usually just somebody else's song sped up. Yeah. What? <laughs> A little yeah. bit. So is nightcore. What? They're both that's, just that's like, nightcore. What the fuck? Speedcore is not. That's no nightcore okay. and speedcore okay. different. I'm not gonna go down uh -oh. the uh -oh. 11 uh -oh. billion uh -oh. EDM <laughs> subgenre <laughs> argument train. <laughs> don't, even, don't even get me started on banshee music, dude. I don't even want to get started. Man, on I'm so shit. happy I'm here in my ska like little land over here. Listen, you can I join no you? Nobody knows about my goblin core playlist. <laughs> Bro, yeah, Zito, or Zito, wait, you no, seem gnome like, core, sorry. No, Zito, you seem like you know uh, a lot about ska. At least that's the impression I get. Damn. Fuck, fuck you. I, I <laughs> got fuck you. Damn. That's so Connor, smooth. keep going. God, I was not done. Oh, wait. Mark, finish. <laughs> Come by Friday. We'll make more music. I have three hours to do it. I spin a wheel. It's great. Come by. Okay, I'm done. Egg salad. Uh... Next, we got Zan. Where can they find you? What are you up to? Hey, uh, you can find me on Twitter or X at Zanny underscore Grim, where I occasionally am shit posting and or making announcements. Uh, Thursday, you can find me uh, potentially tomorrow on Monty Gluis channel for some Dungeon of the Mad Mage, where I play a super sad human fighter en route to probably being the party's first PC death. So looking forward to that. Uh, <laughs> Mondays, you can find me on my Twitch uh, channel, twitch.tv forward slash Sandals Grimm, where I'm DMing a, well, we'll be DMing a third episode of a campaign I started with Bosco, Monty, and a few other friends. And then on Tuesdays, you could find me streaming alongside Bosco, uh, playing some Halo Reach Lasso for more time of screaming at each other and hopefully completing one episode every four hours, or one uh, episode, one level? Yeah, every four hours or so. <laughs> You'll collectively have an episode every four hours. Uh, basically, is how it kind of feels um, without a wrap time. So I'm just sitting there looking at the hours go by and like, damn, we really did get one checkpoint this hour. Sick. But yeah, that's me. Hell yeah, brother. Up next, we got Zito. We're going to find you. What are you up to? Ever since I got the toothpick uh, uh, 3D model. I have been doing so fucking much, it's kinda nuts. Hi, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash Zito, where a big rebrand has fucking happened, apparently for the better. Um, so the little possum character that I've been drawing, it's my new mascot now. Uh, apparently people now enjoy the idea that I now live in this weird ethereal plane on, on a, the, the highway uh, across from Liminal Road. And it's called Ska Diner. Con Edison hasn't shut the place's electricity down, so I'm there forever now. Uh, yep, I have VTuber lore, apparently. I guess I'm a fucking VTuber now? I don't know. But the point being is that now I have a lot of things to do on my Twitch streams over at twitch.tv slash Zito. Like, uh, I made a couple of incentives, and now people are all about those. Like having to play two Peppa Pig games on stream. And to make it better for myself, I had to get drunk. I had 18 shots of whiskey. How am I alive? I don't know. Uh, oh, <laughs> it was really good whiskey. Uh, so Friday, uh, I stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, 
So you can catch me during those times in the afternoons, like around three o'clock, five o'clock to start EST. Uh, stop by on Friday because it'll be more carts because I actually haven't done that in a while. I actually have been off of my off, off the cart wagon for like two weeks now. And then afterwards, the next incentive uh, that the chat has gotten me with subs, uh, I now have to play Pokemon Infinite Fusion Rando Nuzlocke. And then the next incentive after that is B3313. And then the one after that, I'm sure everyone here is going to laugh at me. I have to play Detroit Become Human. Uh, I'm very well, sorry. I, this is I, the part where we all throw our heads just, back and laugh. <laughs> just Ready? remember, Zito, it's not about Ready. racism. <laughs> just remember no, no, that. It's definitely 100% not about racism. Listen, yeah. I, I knew what I was getting myself into when I had to play a fucking David Cage game. It, it was on there. You guys got me to a thousand and a hundred subs. So I'm like, you know what? No, fine. I'll 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 bully myself. I did it with Peppa Pig. I could do it again with a David Cage game. There are so, no metaphors. So that in the future. Yeah, no metaphors. So those will be happening sometime in the future. And then also so I have to play Barbie's Wild Horse Adventure because that was an incentive I couldn't Are, get to. Listen, <laughs> if, you, if, you play Bar if you play Barbie's Pet Rescue, that is the shit, okay? I have to that find is, one that works first. That's the hard part, yeah. But Barbie's yeah. Pet, Adve Pet Rescue is... It is the the pinnacle of Barbie game. I I played. When, I was a gamer because of Barbie Pet Rescue. What can I, I expect played, you on the dream? I, I seriously, I played Barbie Pet Rescue at Unreal Tournament. I had a very <laughs> <laughs> amazing. That explains That's... so much and yet so little. Why do I do this to myself? Because I need to pay bills, and those were all sub incentives. But that's me. Thank you all much for the support, by the way, for those who have been like, yo, cool VTuber and cool, like, model and shit. I'm so happy with Toothpick. I can't wait to, like, just go forward with them. I love the name. Right on. Um, I'm, I'm swimming right now. Monty, where can they find you? What are you up to? Uh... <laughs> You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter and twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Uh, sorry for the interrupted streams this past week. I was not feeling super great. I'm slowly feeling better. However, tomorrow we actually will not be having a session of Dungeon of the Mad Mage because uh, I believe both Evie and Boo Radley are out of town right now. Sad. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, so instead, I'll probably either take the day off or I might do a makeup stream, maybe play some Mario Kart. Uh, I'll see how I feel. Oh, shit. But listen, <laughs> I f I'm feeling better. How about we waste it all, just get angry and immediately blow up all that energy I've recouped? But uh, maybe I might play some games. There's some options we could do. Um, keep it up in the air. But yeah, uh, uh, beyond that, Friday. Hopefully we can get back to Final Fantasy. Again, I'm very sorry we haven't been, been playing that. And then Monday, uh, we'll be jumping into Mass Effect 2. So, yeah. Jazz hands. Check out my YouTube. All my stuff is there. You can watch it with your eyeballs. Right on. Totally sick and nasty, like me, right now. Uh, up next, we got Ever Bosco. Where can he find you? And what are you up to? Hi, you can find me at Ed Bosco VA on both Instagram and Twitter, right here on twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco. That was the name I was looking for. My name, of course, it was in my brain somewhere. Also, special shout out to Artsy Hartsy, who's an amazing friend and played Halo with me last night, multiplayer, and even though I was losing my mind, it was a lot of fun. So I know he'll never hear this, but they're good people. Yeah, certainly not when they're editing the episode and putting it up somewhere. They'll never hear it. I'll never hear it. I'm gonna Let's slip that and send it to Hard Sea Bosco just to spite you. <laughs> it just comes back as a feedback loop of static. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's like that movie uh, Devilfish where it just doesn't play out what you recorded. Shout out to remembering Devilfish. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love Devilfish. I love Hunt Showdown. Uh. I never play it on my streams, uh, but you can find my streams on, on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil, or X, whatever. Shit. Uh, 
I am back from my vacation, and I may be sick, but I will keep your streams coming. Uh, what am I doing Friday? I don't know. Maybe V Rising. Yeah, if you if you like vampires, come to my stream. Maybe you can play on the server that I got set up. Tell uh, me how it, how the DLC works. Uh, it's it's good. It's just it's just an expansion to the map, honestly. That's what it needed. They're filling it out, brother. Uh, yeah. Um, also on Saturday, uh, right before Gateway here on Bootshot TV slash Student Spectacles, we're playing through Yakuza like a dragon. Edward Bosco over here is helping me do that <laughs> for a last little bit here. We're, we're closing in. We're closing in on the end of the Ryu Ga Gotoku line of games. Uh, and Sundays have been playing through uh, the Deus Ex series. Uh, we finished the fall, which was something. I, uh, I actually certainly the say, fell off. I I woke up this morning. It was lying in bed and was just thinking about stuff. And then I just thought about how it just. I watched the clip of it just ending. And your bewilderment, and I'm like, man, that happened. <laughs> That's how that game uh, ended. If I had gone for 45 more minutes, I could have beaten the game during that one stream. It was wild. Uh, but we moved on to Human Revolution, which is a vastly superior game. It is one of my favorite games in the series. Uh, and it is very, very yellow. Well, not as yellow. Not as yellow. I've installed some mods to make it less yellow. Uh, That's always yes. good. Yet somehow it still is. Somehow it's still yellow, but it's very pretty still. <laughs> um, yar. Um, that's. Oh, also, uh, check out the Hydromancer's spellbook available now on DMs Guild. Uh, I am currently working on the Geomancer's spellbook, and the people on Twitter voted, and I will be including Pharomancy spells. That is uh, the manipulation of metal in the geomancy book so oh fuck yeah be on the lookout for that i have a very funny spell called sharp and dull it it How does a it does a very cool thing to you weapons have, you have to tell me what it does to guns because it'll just be nothing but hysterics hmm I'm not sure <laughs> what it'll do to guns but it will we'll figure it out uh can we get gun yeah. blades no maybe damn it um <laughs> Yes, be on the lookout for uh, the Geomancer spellbook sometime this month, hopefully. Uh, that's all I got from me. This episode of The Unexpectables is brought to you in part by Die Hard Dice. I made Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice. Die hard dice. Die. Listen to this quality. Listen to this. I'm using my metal dice right now. Oh. Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice is your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLES to save 10% on your order. It was really funny because recently uh, uh, I, I had an in-person D&D game and my friend Gaius, not the character Gaius, my IRL uh, online friend and IRL friend Gaius, has them, has the lies. Right I know, <laughs> you're also <laughs> my friend. Um, but they, they had the Lies Dice, which had the bag, and I was like, oh, I didn't get a bag with mine, because I was sent the first, like, prototype version, I never received a bag, so, if you bought the Lies Dice, congratulations, you have a bag, I didn't get a bag. Oh. It was cool to see, though. No, yeah. it's, I, the, the caveat is that I have the first set of, like, Lies Dice, which is super cool, and, like, the prototype think, before that. I think well. I actually have the first set of what? Lies Dice. Get Shrek, I Monty. Wow. I, I, just, I had to send pictures to you to see if you liked them. But I... What, you, Damn. You have, you have the production sample, Connor. Monty has the first official dice. I didn't get a bag. <laughs> I also didn't. What are that. you? Who, <laughs> <laughs> who? <laughs> also check out our our spring uh we've got a new design coming uh don't worry it is it is literally so close you can almost taste it chat uh the new design is coming it will be available soon probably before the end of the month actually um we also couldn't do this week in week out without viewers 
like you. Viewers such as Honeydew Moon, thank you for the two months, Caddy. Erwin Elf, thank you for the 36 months. Dragon Alchemist, thank you for the 39 months. L Robot, thank you for the 22 months of Prime. Snapper Jack, thank you for the 14 months of Prime. Dark Lord Popo, thank you for the 34 months of Prime. Welcome back, Zito. Excited for another episode of The Unexpectables, Mark. Oh, boy. Uh, Wolfwing Pup, thank you for the 50 bits. I see Panic Grimtongue and his band as the Nightwish of this world. Maybe. Uh, Wed Ward, <laughs> thank you for the 33 months. The highlight of every Wednesday night. Phil Lane, thank you for the 20 months. 20 months. I'm going to have to catch up in the VOD because I'm stuck at work. Love y'all. Ellie Kitten, thank you for the 20 months. Time flies. Drifter of Time and Space, thank you for the 11 months. A little 10 until the legendary number. Killer Chansey, thank you for the 10 bits. I can now see it. Moist Critical would play himself, Isekai, into the unexpected. <laughs> that would be really here, funny. Here, let me, let me oh, yeah, here. Hey, uh, everybody, it's you. Critical. I am surrounded by a bunch of burly barbarians in this country called Tavaria. Let's do yeah. this shit. <laughs> Let's do this yeah. shit. He, he plays as his killer bean character. Yes! Let's see if they can bench press these ass cheeks. He was also like a police officer in a horror film as well, apparently. Yes, he was. Zito? Zito. Yeah. Would yeah. he be an would he be an artificer or would be he be a, a freaking ranger but use No moist mancer. Oh, that's fair. Okay, can you hydromancer? Yeah. The hydromancer. hydromancer. There, there you go. go. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. That that's my impression. Yeah. I cast Deluge. Yeah. <laughs> uh Zombie Monster, thank you for these six months of Prime. We have come back. Now, where is Wark? Wark. Uh, Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 100 bits. So when will we get Fort Dort Z Devaria Unbound, or will we just be skipping to Fort Dort Resurrection? By the way, this is the hardest intro I've ever written. I just want to tell you all that. <laughs> nice. That's yeah, surprising. we're going to go straight to Battle of Gods, actually. Uh, the Unknown 926, thank you for the 19 months. Four <laughs> more until 20 win. Oz195, thank you for the 37 months. Callum Draws, thank you for the 55 bits. Starting college later this month, very excited. Congratulations. Congrats. Mm. Let's go. Hope it goes well for you. Jason Clay, thank you for the uh, 1K bits. Uh, 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 there's no message. Extra Vowel, thank you for 33 months. And happy birthday. Uh, the Dang Master, thank you for the six gifted subs to the community. Okie dokie, artichoke me daddy. Thank you for the 21 months. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> it is my 21 month anniversary. Thank you for the endless entertainment. What? Thank you. I'm sorry, I was typing. What did you it, just it, say? It, please don't make him read it again. <laughs> no, no, don't read, let, him, let her figure it out. From our, uh... <laughs> well, all right then. Continue. Yeah, no, Thank you for the 40 months. After more than three months away, I'm finally current again. What's up? Awesome Link, thank you for the 22 months of Prime. Time for Gaius to come back and for us to go kind of, I mean, rescue a princess. Uh, Blake G, thank you for the 12 months. Smiling KJ, thank you for the 100 bits. Howdy, gang. First time sending bits. Thank you guys for helping me create my own love child of D&D &D and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Ooh. Yo. Interesting stuff. Drifter of Time and Space, thank you for the 2.8k bits. Take my bits. Happy to watch live. Have fun. Ox Factor, thank you for the 32 months of Prime. Asheron Wind Spear, thank you for the 10 bits. <clears throat> Dr. Chili Boom MD 1988, thank you for getting a tier one sub to Kami Zantar. The Drifter of Time and Space, thank you for getting a sub. Emerald Bandit, thank you for the 35 months. Greetings and salutations. Uh, more three and door. Thank you for the 100 bits. It's time to come to a world of wonder like no other. Oh. Zoa King, thank you for the 300 bits. Hey, y'all, I'm headed to Evo for Dragon Ball Fighters again. Made 97th last year, and I want to do better this year. Well, congratulations Yo. on making top 100. And here's hoping that uh, you go all the way. Here's, here's hoping your game finally gets fucking rollback. <laughs> uh... Nightshade, thank you for the 39 months. Have a good session. Won't be able to listen because internet at work sucks, but sending good vibes all the same. 
Kaze, 3173, thank you for the 39. That's, oh, thank God. A stream that wasn't canceled this week. I got withdrawals, man. <laughs> yeah, Don't people are either out that. of town or sick. It's just something's going around, man. Dude, it's July, In August. Case, it's going to be spotty. Yeah. I was, I was, I was jonesing in, in my <laughs> hotel room. Uh, Protoss103, thank you for the 10 bits. Zito's back now. Everything will get back on track. Oh, God, Shinobi really? Seder... <laughs> yeah, Zito, you're at the stable factor here. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> you would know a thing or two about stables being a goat and all. Damn. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Who dropped those bits? Uh, Protoss103. Oh, that's right. I'd expect that from you. Mm. Bah, ram you. Uh, Shinobi Seder, thank you for the two bits, shave and haircut. No. Too big. It's my beard. <laughs> Old guard dude, thank you for the 1k bits. Don't anger the DM. Uh, why? I'm so words. jazzed. I'm so jazzed right now. We, we we don't anger the DM. Hold on. Wa okay, fuck you. Watch this. Here I go. Electrum. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> now I'm the, I'm the DM. You know what, Zito? I've decided you're not going to Delvaria. Gaius is going to be gone for this part of the story. No! no. You're going back to Martirallo. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, no. No. Mar no. Mar Martirallo is the Brazil of this game. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to Brazil. You are going to Martirallo! Oh, my God. He's back. I am back. I got a mug. Shadow right. Realm. No. I'm sending you to Tampa, Florida. <laughs> no! Oh! <laughs> Send me to the Shadow Realm, please! Uh, lots of me, the robot. Thank you for the... Wait, I think I skipped it. Uh... Yeah, you have three minutes as well, Connor. I think we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Old Guard, dude, thank you for the 200 bits. Uh... Oh, also, thank you for the 1K bits earlier. Scat Flip, so thank you for the 27 months. Woo, get to catch this live for once. Mud Martin, thank you for the 38 months. Fury the Gold Dragon, thank you for the 200 bits. Hell yeah, I got off work early. I get to watch you guys live tonight. Best night ever. Lord Servitor, thank you for the 40 months. Hey, Connor, speaking of Goblin Core, any thoughts on the band Necro Goblin? Necro Goblicon? If you've heard of them, I have heard of them. I haven't heard any of their songs. Hold on, typing a word down. Give me a minute. Also, I made I I made a mistake. I, I I made a slip of the tongue. I meant gnome core, which is completely different than goblin core. I think. <laughs> God damn it! My, yeah, it's my, it's my, regional my, thing. My FBI agent's gonna have a time looking at my search history in a few seconds. <laughs> uh, old guard dude, thank you for the two hundred bits. Wait, I already called that one. Who do you call? And the sugar lumps. Thank you for the forty months. Uh, just played Kirby for the first time, and I totally get it now. <laughs> Which one, dude? I'm yeah. telling you. Oh my god. I, I get love, it. I love Kirby because it's like, oh, and then you get to play. You're like, well, there's some eldritch shit going on in this game. Is that Peter? Oh, uh, what a cute Holy little guy. Fuck. Oh, he's kind of fucked up, actually. <laughs> uh, Magic Ninjago, thank you for the combined 200 bits. Uh, I managed to catch the stream, going through a rough day. Prayers, and my cat come home safe. Oh, buddy, your cats oh, come buddy. home safe as well. Uh, I have faith. Mr. Nani, thank you for the five subs gifted to the community. Zanlita, thank you for the 100 bits. Zeta, become possum. <laughs> Mr. Nani, thank you for the 37 months of Prime. Zan Wind, thank you for the 38 months. Roan One Flu, thank you for the 39 months. Wow, I'm just in time. Astral Wizard Hester, thank you for the three months. Morthrandor, thank you for the 10 gifted subs to the community. Lost Made the Robot, thank you for the 500 bits. Bell MSU, thank you for the 38 months. King Shinrock, thank you for the 27 months. Defang Shadow, thank you for the 23 months. Time for more fun in Delvaria. Draken King, thank you for the super chat. What? Oh yeah, it's Twitch's like idea of putting in their own in in-house like donation bit. Oh just yeah. Me. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank you, uh, but. Just use me. <laughs> what, what's more into the breach? What feelings will Zan have this session? Don't call me out. Uh, Crown Piss of Bel Air. Thank you for the 1.5 <laughs> bits. Amazing. Uh, Lost Made the Robot. Thank you for getting a tier one sub to Draken King. Uh, Shade 1ED. Thank you for the 13 months. Monty, give me your energy. I'm taking my driver's test later this month. 
just, you know, be calm. That's the best advice I have. I mean, it's easy to say, like, don't be nervous, but, like, you know, take your time. If they're a good, you know, if it's a good driving place, like, they shouldn't get mad at you for taking your time. She has non flashbacks. She says, just take your time. Just take your time. Don't worry about it. Just take your time. Just take your time. Yeah, literally. Like, hold up traffic yeah. if you have to, if it means you're doing it safe. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, oh, yeah. You know. Don't let other people dictate your fucking actions just because they're honking horns at you. Don't ever let yeah. that happen. Yeah, take your time. I'm going to blast through these last couple here. Uh, Shade 1E, e wait, no. Kase3173, thank you for the five gifted subs to the community. Captain Fish Eggs, thank you for the 100 bits. Centaur Cry, thank you for the 15 bits. Uh, the Holy Carp, thank you for the 24 months. Venmaru Kauros Corwin, thank you for the 200 bits. Draken King, thank you for the 50 bits. Solar Misfit, thank you for the 18 months of Prime. GTG Maximo, thank you for the five gifted subs to the community. That one, Nerdy Dad, thank you for the two years of Prime Subage. Gray Sky Gamer, thank you for the 11 months. GTG Maximo, thank you for the 100 bits. Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 15 bits. GTG Maximo, thank you for the 100 additional bits. Uh, Step and Razor, thank you for the 21 months. And 100 bits from the ghost of Corporal Jenkins. Oh, for fuck's oh, sake. Rick Come Jenkins. on, man. <laughs> really? Can you let Jenkins die, Monty. All righty. Yeah, we're getting escape. into a world of wonder like no other under the shining sun. <laughs> Can't escape. So, when last we left our heroes, Milo, the Azamar cleric, Iskan, the lizard folk druid, Otho, the shifter rogue, Kai, the human wizard, and a new found friend in Strigal, the Kenku wizard, the party has made a dark discovery. After seeking out a pearl of Necrecta lost in communication, the party then sought it out directly and physically, only to discover it to be in the possession of a strange undead creature. The creature, Agrun, has refused to relinquish the orb to the party, seeking their aid in curing the local village children who have taken ill after his creation, and only promises to release it until that goal is achieved. The party, understanding and being sympathetic to the situation, accepted the mission Ogrun has set upon them. Seeking the aid of the neighboring nation of Hearthland, the party reunited with their friend Stragal and sought counsel with the Medicina Temple and its head physician and apothecarian, Odette. However, to the party's dismay, Odette was unable to determine what disease or condition was afflicting the children. Seeing a mutual opportunity, the queen and queen of Hearthland decided to beseech the party to seek out their daughter, Aya, the best known apothecarian potentially in all of Alton, providing traveling funds and teleportation services. However, things won't be so easy, as the lands of Delvaria are harsh and challenging, and its people more so. Aya's husband has a reputation as a ruthless warrior, and there's the rare chance that Aya might not even be alive to begin with. Even so, as the party collects themselves, we return to the unexpectables. So. 
as you all begin to recollect and collect things, taking some time to rest and think about your travel, Gaius, it is at this point that you return back to Hearthland in the company of Master Candlestaff. You feel yourself shunted back into the main teleportation chamber with the old man as he adjusts his robes and his staff and goes, I am sorry, young man. I wish we could have found more, but at least what we found was interesting. And it sounds like most of your family is hale and healthy. I, I, I'm so sorry, Monty. I actually like had to run to the restroom very, very quickly. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. It, it's okay. I, I tried to say BRB as quickly as I could, but like it was too late. So <laughs> to just run back like five seconds, I, I'm so sorry. You're all good. Uh, you have just teleported back in with Master Candlestaff, as I take the picture on the overlay. Uh, as you return, he turns to you and kind of goes, Ah, oh, well, I'm sorry we could not find out more, but I am glad to hear that your family at least sounds like they are mostly hale and whole and have a direction they're going. I only wish we could have gotten more from there. It's a lot more than what I had before, in all honesty. I have a name and a very cryptic one at that, but I find it very interesting. And honestly, I can't wait. It just sounds like a whole brand new adventure to take. As you kind of smiles at you, you watch as a guard kind of rushes up and says, Master Candlestaff, um, the friends of this one have arrived in the castle and they've been set upon a very important task. Um, my name's I was... not this one, my name's Gaius. Uh, Sorry, Master Gaius. My apologies yeah. for my rudeness. And he bows very politely. Uh, no, he just like, picks him up by the back of the scruff of his shirt and pulls him up to stand up. Nah, it's fine. Uh, of course. Um, they're currently in the public library of the royals um, awaiting you. I believe they are currently discussing matters of travel. Um, it feels pertinent that you be with them at the time. Um, that also is pertinent that uh, Master Candlestaff, we will require... Uh, teleportation for them and theirs uh, to uh, Oasis as well. And the candle set kind of goes, goes, ah, oh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, Gaius, go on ahead. I will discuss the matter of this teleportation. You need not be there for that. Very well. And once again, Gaius kind of like gives like a half bow, like awkwardly, like trying to figure out like how, mm -hmm. how to be polite about all of this. You've given me so much so far. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Any friend of the steward is a friend of mine. Okay, Besides. Well, here I here I go worth believing. Wait. Woo! All right. The rest of you um, the hallway. have convened for convenience sake after a night's rest uh, in very, very nice guest rooms. Kind of make the ones in uh, Easton Vale a little bit something to be desired. Uh, comfortable beds with, you know, vanities, you know, private bathing chambers. It's very nice. It's not too large. It definitely would suit anyone visiting. Uh, however, after that, you all meet uh, in a library, kind of around a round table to discuss your travel and uh, things of that nature. Uh, and as you are all sitting there, uh, eventually, is there anything you wish to discuss before Gaius arrives, or do you guys want to wait to discuss before? Until yeah, how about that local arrive? sports team? Oh, they're doing so great. They're going to get all the football, dude. It's going to be great. What the oh. fuck is football? <laughs> Oh, they are the hold how the ears? They are they, are they call it Alabama. football out here. It's a different sport. <laughs> they call it soccer here. It's football in East America. Oh, there it is. <laughs> ah, kickball. I see. Good old soccer and ball. And the Greenvale it... Griffins. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, as you're all kind of discussing, uh, probably the most difficult thing uh, is that there is no map of Delvaria that you can find at all. <laughs> <laughs> Del do we know if Delvaria exists? I mean, you do. It borders Hearthland, and they were at war, so obviously it exists. But but has only... anyone ever been there and lived to tell the tale? Um, no one who's written it down clearly in this library. So it does, guys. Mm. It doesn't exist. There's no mission. Um, Wait, it doesn't hey. exist. Don't don't I? Uh, guys, <laughs> it is at this point that you enter into the scene what? to the rest of the group and Stragall currently sitting around a round library table 
uh, with a you know series of wax candles in the center, giving an ambient light. Rogal's ear tufts will pick up as he kind of picks up a pillow with a mage hand, kind of gives Gaius a knowing look. <laughs> Gaius holds his fist out to punch it as it careens with his fist. <laughs> oh, oh, no, you don't. I'll get you some point. Ah, Mr. Agni. Glad you could join us. Oh, Gaius, uh, hello, you're back. Hi, thank you. It's, I am so sorry that I had to take the time off to do this, but I have I have a word, at least a uh, some sort of clue to see where my family went. And I do know that they actually like went south of here, so at least I have somewhere to look. I'm glad your expedition proved fruitful. Aye. Well, fruitful as it's ever going to be. I'm unfortunately going to now have to do a little bit of research on something called the Amethyst, Amethyst Path. Would any of us know about that? My Monty do any of us know about that? My Monty do any of us know about that? I will say... Really sorry, we don't know anything about that either. Everybody roll history checks. <laughs> hey, oh, you're Mike, a machine. Mike. You're a messy. You're a I know about the <laughs> Hey, look at that natural 20. <laughs> no, oh let's go. <laughs> well, I'm not even going to roll. You got... There we go. Oh no, everybody, goodness. everybody Actually, roll. Because hey, look at people... that natural 20. <laughs> fuck? I don't know. Wow. I'm not... <laughs> we got everything Watch we need. How the fuck do you guys watch... know about this and I don't? <laughs> Watch no. this be an actual, like, doo-doo roll. Oh, it's not oh bad, actually. No, you're good. good. Well, Tama's been inspiration. Do. No, <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I just one, of your, one of your Bertrand inspirations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would also say, Kai, please roll, because this might be more relevant than you think. 18. 18, okay. Excellent natural 20s. I will keep them in mind, because uh. you are not regionally aware of this, unfortunately, Eskan and Milo. I did this to be kind of sneaky. However, you did roll two natural 20s, so I will grandfather them over to future rolls, just to be fair. Hooray! Um, so I can know about Pennant Grimtongue and his eight pack. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, dude, I thought he had a six pack. However, poop, but these guys can't know about Funny Path. The Otho and Kai, uh, the Amethyst Pass. You don't know about the Ameth Amethyst Pass? Path? Bleh, oh my god, I did it to myself. Specifically. <laughs> however, you do know that Volar is known for shipping out Amethyst in large amounts. It's a very popular export, so... But the path is not something you've heard of. That sounds... foreign. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I have the knowledge of this. And it's going on the cork board. Milo and I will be in the corner geeking out about our favorite comic book, The Amethyst Path, about a series of teenagers who discover secret crystals inside their local mountain and gain oh, wow. supernatural powers. Did what was your favorite teenagers arc? with attitude and give them powers? Sounds like a really good show. My yeah. favorite arc is the version where uh, the one guy beats the other guy with a rock and then becomes a little golem creature. I, I like the one where the, the green I, one I turns good Friday and rock, changes so his color that. to white and joins the I, team. I so do enjoy Steven Universe. Uh, you all kind of ruminating on that. Uh, you have access to the teleportation and any questions you might have uh, regarding Delvaria. You're in a library, so any information here you want to garner, you could possibly get before traveling out. I would love to learn about their local religions. Okay. Uh, go ahead for me and roll a flat investigation for me, Milo. Mm -hmm. Can I state what I want to do? 19? Ooh. I will oh, say, tonight. if you guys want to attempt to search for books, uh, this will be part of your pile of books you've been looking at. I will say anybody who's interested in finding something on a specific topic, we can go through each book each time, depending on how well you roll. Ooh, let's go. Hey, All right, Monty, okay. uh, real quick, because of Strigal's background, he does yes. physically have something called library access. Yes. Does that additionally give anyone assistance in trying to follow find stuff here? It gives them access to the library <laughs> because Fair you're okay. there. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. We are here now. <laughs> here. Library cards. There's a library it's here. Allowed in here because Woo. of you. If you weren't here, they probably would need to either get their own access or inquire. So you being there is how they get access to these. Got it. Okay. Money. Yeah. I want. I want to look for tactics. I want to. I want to know how these people fight. I want okay. warfare. 
<laughs> Go ahead and roll an investigation check. Fuck. We're going to tap into Milo first. Uh, Milo, uh, uh, in the past, you guys have looked into this before, the religion of, of Delvaria. Uh, <laughs> you find journals detailing uh, people, you know, traveling to Delvaria and specifically, like, getting... What's interesting is the... It's not so much the information you get, it's like how much information you get, how much it contr uh, contradicts itself, and how random it is. Huh. Um, specifically, it talks about a deity, which is the namesake of the country, called Delvaria. She was like a warrior queen who is like impossibly strong, did crazy things. You know, there's stories about how she had like 30 children and mm. like did just insane like fought impossible things like ancient dragons in single hand combat and each story is ridiculous as the next however it seems that this figure is probably a an, an important one um in terms of other religious text um there seems to be a sort of sacredness to oases specifically in delvaria in relation to druidic practices and the worship mm. of yidia the goddess of nature okay that is what you were able to find uh did i come across any religious symbols or or etchings of any kind no the only okay. thing you really get is like, hey, sometimes when I was at this oasis, they mentioned this. And when I was traveling with these people, they told me this. It literally is secondhand accounts. It's not like, oh, in Delvaria, this is the religion. It's like, these people told me what this was. So this is what I they told me. That's what you gotcha. get. That is the best that you get. Okay. Uh, you want to look for fighting tactics, right? I want to see their warfare. What do they usually do? Sure, go for it. Here I go. Yeah. Six. Six. The only accounts you can find are recent ones, actually. Uh, Strigal, because of your background and your experience, uh, you would know where the actual, like, war logs would be, like, recounts of the, the previous war a couple years ago. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing, like, this is the technique of the the underhand sweep of Delvaria. Like, there's nothing like that that exists. However, there are recounts of the battlefield on how the Delvarians fought specifically. Um, I would say, because your role wasn't super stellar, however, Strigal is here and has experience. Um, specifically, you learn just through reading, one Delvarian could easily cleave through about 20 people in Hearthland one man is got the strength of about 20. So they possess incredible might. They tend to favor axes, battle axes, and really vicious weapons. Um, swords specifically meant to shatter spears, uh, all sorts of different means, and just like fighting through death. There are even accounts of Delvarians, well-trained ones, like that should like received mortal wounds but still fought anyway almost impossibly guy like just a camera shot of guy standing there with all of his armament on his back why does this sound familiar uh right. Strigal, you experienced that firsthand i'm not certain why it feels familiar to you but these battle reports are not exaggerated i was i was there Anybody else want to look anything up? Oh, yeah. Yes, but I will wait. Go ahead, Connor. Otho, uh, what would I, you like to look up? I would like to look up what the political landscape in Delvaria is like, if there are any, uh, if there's any murmurs of, of dissent or any sort of groups that have cropped up representing a certain group of people or something. Sure, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Here I go! I said... Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, it's coming. That's a 19, plus 2. The information Hello? is... It, it. I see the roll, but I, I, I assume it's... I mean, I'm going to roll with the modifier, but I know it's good. It's um, having a bit of a time. What's interesting is the lack of information. You don't see anything about any dissenters, anything, like, in that regard. 
you feel like that would probably be a case by case. Like there might be individuals who have left Elvaria for one reason or another, but that's an assumption that you might have. Um, looking through and just looking at like, you know, allies and enemies, um, specifically you find uh, a particular like entry in sort of relations, uh, specifically regarding the town that you're going to, the city you're going to, which is, uh, be, uh, it's got a weird name, sorry, I'm looking it up right now. Uh, Ganjifa Strix, also known as Jifa Strix. Um, specifically has an arrangement with the king of Delvaria, uh, or at least the Delvarian royal family, that uh, every crown prince is married to a woman selected by that, that city, essentially. Basically to broker peace between the Delvarian royal family and this large city that you, you're going to go see eventually. That's about all you get, unfortunately. There's not so, a lot more information. Run that by me again. So the Davarian royal family has a arrangement with Genjifa Strix? Yes. The full the full name of the city is Genjifa Strix. It's also known as Jifa Strix. It's got a lot of different names. Um, in... they, they have an arrangement Yes. that the Davarian royal family marries into the populace of Genjifa Strix? Specifically, it's at the crown, whatever, next in line or crown ruler of Delvaria. Um, there's an agreement that Ganjifa Strix picks someone in the city, essentially, to marry the crown prince as basically a way to be like, we're cool and don't attack our giant sat a city, please, more or less. Are we cool? Yeah, we're cool for now. <laughs> does it, it does with with my 19 would it say anything if if they're resentful of this or it just seems to state that it happens it doesn't really give any recounts of individuals okay it does specifically note as well that it's male or female it it doesn't specify one gender over mm. the other as well ah they're progressive over there apparently <laughs> but unfortunately that is all you find he scan. Hi. Yes, hi. Hello. Um, no, I would like... no maps as hard as you search, and I, it's something got... that's pretty well known. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. I was going for something completely different, but thank you for pouring more salt into the open wound just to make sure I'm awake. Uh, you <laughs> <on> the maps? <laughs> I'm, uh, I want to look for any uh, recounts or receipts of uh, what Delvaria's main trade is. Go outside and... of combat obviously go ahead and roll an investigation check we made the export 13. violence 13 13 um there's some trade agreements specifically you find trade with uh hearthland specifically um it's it's more of an itemized list and some of the stuff is just like yeah, okay uh specifically let me grab here. uh interestingly enough clay is a popular export um as well as leathers uh, specifically, uh, tin and copper is an export mining wise. Uh, there's also weirdly enough, something that's very well coveted called serpopod glands specifically something used to make perfumes is listed as a very prized export. What is it and what, how do I kill it? Is there anything that lists what they import? Uh, specifically, it only lists what Genjifa Strix get, the big the big city that's kind of its own thing. There's no, like, trade stuff listed at all, at least formally, anyway. What does, what does Genjifa get? Uh, Genjifa from Hearthland? Yes. Uh, produce, weirdly enough, feed and hay is a big export. So food for horses seems to be a big export, uh, as well as natural produce. Um, and wood is a huge export as well. Uh, gemstones, jewelry, things of kind of opulence, as well as like copper and other things. Books as well, entertainment, poetry, stuff like that. It seems to be a big mixed bag, a lot of like opulent things. 
but the one that's the biggest export is hay feed and like horse stuff like horseshoes farriers things like that seems to be very popular okay so you're saying it's dry I'm shrugging. I mean, it's just, it's an itemized <laughs> list. Whatever no, you want to get from that is, is what you it's get. It's so dang dry here. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything they want to look into? Uh, you can any books about liches? Uh, can Strigal look at, uh, would you mind, rather, Kai? Uh, could Strigal look over your spell book? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm down with that. All right. Then that's what Strigal will have been doing pretty much this whole time, is kind of studying how uh, Kai does things. Get a life. Fucking nerd. <laughs> anyway. Uh, ooh, liches. Any books ooh, on liches? Ooh, your gain is really high. Bosco, you need to turn sake, it down. I didn't touch it. it. might just be close to your microphone. I don't know. Sorry, it was just very loud. No, you're good. Any books on liches? That was something you asked Candlestaff, and he, whatever information he gave you is what he gave you in previous. Well, damn. Yeah, unfortunately. Then I'm useless. All right, well, with that, unless anybody has anything else they would like to look into, uh, you all... Can we bring I have, gifts? Have... Oh. You can, yeah, if you want to. I have an idea. I want to I wanna take back that, hand, that great axe I got. That's okay, oh. Kai wasn't using it anyway. <laughs> um, I didn't give it back to you, motherfucker. He said he's oh, taking it back. But I like to, I would like to have it back. I will present that as a gift, as a, as a to a nation that loves weaponry and fighting. I feel like giving them armament might be a serviceable gift. Well, then meet me outside, nerd. You want me to fight you for it? <laughs> no, take the fucking. Yo, axe. fucking square up right now. Let's call <laughs> I, up our I, hands. I legit, I would love to square up, but we're not gonna do PvP. You can have the axe. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, for Monty's sake, we're not going to square up. Oh, no, not for your nice. sake, is you were like, let's go outside. You see Herfire, the elderly dwarven like librarian leader lady, just look at you like, I love me two dead bodies by the time I'm done. If you fight <laughs> um, Shut up, bitch. Make it a three way. Let's go. Oh, oh yeah, the level 20 librarian, probably. <laughs> yeah, right, the level 20 <laughs> wizard. Just, and fireball. She just claps a book on your head and it just explodes. I use the brain. spell not. I use the spell. Uh, what the fuck is it? Uh, non lethally. <laughs> I will use the shush that. attack. Just three thousand damage. You explode into dust. <laughs> I do have a question though. Yes. Has, Ga has Gaius been brought up to speed about what the fuck is going on, or are we gonna roleplay that? I imagine you guys probably want to pick him oh. up to speed just to save time. I I figured we would do that while we're researching. While you're yeah, traveling, but, too, as yeah. well. I mean, you gotta go from Oasis into who knows where, so you might have time yeah. to travel. However, it is arranged for you guys to collect horses. Um, there's also, it will be, it's not a surprise to you, they also do mention is that bartering seems to be the main way of, like, buying and selling things. Um, there is actually no Delvarian coinage at all. It does just wow. flat out doesn't exist, yeah. God Which damn. probably explains why there's no trade lists um, from them specifically. Uh, wow. So they do not use coin, you learn through your research. Good since you know. did ask uh, Eastgan. God, what do we, what do we get Good for quote unquote know. currency? Dried food? <laughs> well, I was going to say we can probably collect some hay and take I, with us like I mean, a bushel or two. I mean, I was going to say we just find something to kill on the road. But Mark, and bring it hay is for feet. horses. Uh, Ganjifa Strix is going to be a little different culturally than the Dalvaria as a whole. So their customs and cultures might be require a little more of a deft touch than meeting a... I, I do have this. I hold up the book, The Call of Thunder. Uh, what yes. is that? Oh, it's just a rare book I found. Uh, I've been holding on to it for a while. I, oh. I kind of read through it this whole time, but it could be a gift for someone. Was it a good read? As, as the cat, yes. think so. The cat, the cat <laughs> believes it was a good read. Yes, it was the cat's meow. Yeah, thank you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, um, it's all right. Quick question. In any of our research, especially when when lo looking through trade, was there ever listed? uh any sort of import of water or anything like that 
No, there's no import of water. Okay. Though so alcohol, I would say, would probably be also on that list, but that feels like anywhere would trade alcohol, because, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the Devarian that we did see did really want, like, special alcohol. So, maybe. That might have just been his personal preference, though. But still. Might be something. Considering we know Otho has a special alcohol. <laughs> Look, drink, drink with your special tongue. <laughs> I do have a bottle from when we uh, solved the case in Martorello. I have a bottle of wine. It's quite special. Wine God, can... apostrophe. Can I be real with y'all? Yeah. I, I feel like SpongeBob, who's about to walk into the salty Splatoon. My oh, yeah, we have no idea what we're walking into. Oh yeah, so... no. How tough? How tough are you? Oh God, does that mean Gaius is Sandy? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I Man, mean, am I? <laughs> Strigal, um, you're, you're, I mean, Strigal and Kai, you're both very intelligent. Um, I feel like Eastgan as well. You've traveled as well, Eastgan. You, you kind of have some options. I mean, um, you could buy things here, like in Herflin, and try and guess and bank on the fact that it's like a little bit farther away. Or you could go to Genji for Strix see and ask what might be worth picking up and then pick it up from there though it might be more expensive that's the difference potentially yeah my my big concern is just that once we get there we don't have the resources that we have here that's why i was looking into what kinds of things they might want imported so then we can bring something that regularly they have to pay extra to import as a mm. gift that was kind of my thought process right I wonder, though, if we would get taxed at the border. Uh, that's a thing that I happens. Mean, <laughs> no one has taxed us at any of the borders that we've gone through so far, but that's we not, have, that's not I true. suppose there could be. That's not true. We've had checkpoints for magical MacGuffinry. That's true. I did get patted down and choked out. We but... we also... Okay. So, what? but but we also weren't carrying gifts or with any intent to sell, you know? True, true. Oh, I mean, if we go from Hearthland, it doesn't seem like they're, if Delvari doesn't have, like, traditional coinage, there might not be a, at least a traditional sense of taxes. Right. I guess that's fair. Mm. Oh, yeah, right. There's also Goblin Bridge. <laughs> Good old How are they doing this whole jarn? time? Oh, my God. We got to go back there and collect. We got to go Holy back. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> They've probably earned so much money by now. Oh. Anyway, I'm down for bringing either like bushels of hay or extra bags of, of horse feed because that seems to be something that's in short supply. My expectation is, considering we're going to be going through a town called Oasis and based on what their imports are, they probably don't have a lot of forestry. So plant foods and things like that um, might not be the best idea just because we don't know how long it'll take us to get there and those would be perishable. But like... Mm -hmm. Things like wood and grain and things that are dried out already would keep for a very long time and might make a better gift. I agree. And if we take out the guards, it'll be pretty easy. What? <laughs> oh, sorry. Did I miss the plan? Was that not the plan? I like this plan. I try so hard. There's, too much, there's, <laughs> there's not, way too I'm much spice tonight. I'm right. back, baby. <laughs> so let's go. Your plan is to go out and buy some things in the city. Yeah. Yes. As yeah. gifts. Now, keep in mind, you have to carry this as well. However, well, we're getting well, horses. We guy is, so we're good. You will yeah, be getting I was horses. To, I was about to say, Monty, yeah. they're just gonna fucking throw it all on me. What are you talking about? They have to carry it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to get guys. Now, oh, I will say, Team this. Pachyderm is back. I will say this. Uh, I'm gonna say, as you guys are out buying the hay and feed, you do learn that the reason that hay and feed <laughs> is in kind of like demand there is because people coming through Defa Strix. Not specifically staying in Belvaria, but people who are moving through to head north buy it, apparently. Mm. You learn. Well, and that's exciting. Yeah, so but you could trade it there, but if you're traveling to Delvaria, like if you're actually trading with true like with Delvarian people, it might not be worth that much, is what you learn. Mm. Uh, um Strigal will kind of approach uh Otho. Master Valentinius. Does Yes. Uh this Ganji for Strix have any uh, trade ties to Motorolo. 
would I know that? Uh, I would say because of your background and as well as your position in Martorallo, yes. It is known as a, like, a merchant's-like playground. It's very, a, like... A lot of times, merchants will come through the Marallo, sell all their stuff, and then they're like, I'm gonna go to Gifa Strix, and then, like, come back out and go wherever I need to go. It's kind of in a nice sweet spot between Hearthlin, Via Sulai, and Eltmer, actually. Uh, quite so, as a matter of fact. Interesting. Well, that might go a long way into easing at least initial introductions, once we arrive there. Mm, perhaps. He he looks a bit uh, he looks a bit pensive at that. Is that a problem? God damn it! It's the baby one. Why do I do this? <laughs> You're just, just so it. good at saying yourself this scene, out, Monty. Monty. We're just gonna let that fade out in the background. How many times can we get rid of this baby? <laughs> I don't know how many right. times can you kick it over the fence. So what would you guys like to thing. buy for trade, essentially, or essentially what's going to be your money? Remember, you were given money by the royal family for this purpose. Hmm. We were, weren't we? Weren't yes. we? What do I get if I trade the baby? Man, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't want <laughs> Are there to pay child support. You have to pay more money. Now, Monty did pause, heavy, baby. indicating that yeah. she didn't think about it. You know, I know why I paused, okay. because I winced my eyes shut and leaned back in my chair and went, I woke up for this, and then leaned back and went back to the ending. That's why I paused. Aren't you just so wake glad up. I'm you back? excited for this. This was your life. Aren't you Monty. so happy I'm back, Monty? What are you buying? I have a genuine question. What are you selling? Yes, yes he's can. Can, can. can we uh, find any, like, wood-carved uh, griffins? Yeah, very easily. It's a very popular, like, kind of, you know, souvenir item. Can we get one of those, maybe a little bit more ornate, something that's been, like, glazed over so it's not going to dry and crack? Sure, yeah, easy enough. That'd probably be about two gold. And it weighs probably about two pounds. Seems to be made of a nice oak wood. Monty, is, um, I know we were in a library, but is there a bookstore that we could potentially get Gaius's rare book appraised for its cost? Yes. I thought you were going to say buy one. I was like, look, the royal family's kind, but we don't have that kind of money. Yeah, we don't <laughs> have book money. I mean, a, I mean book. a fucking book somehow costs like 200 fucking dollars. Guys, do you yeah, remember well, apparently where paper's you... like 50. Do you remember where you got that book from? That was like the second town we were in. Uh, oh. I, I, we're on the map. The map. Hold on. The map's here. We, we can look at the map. Map. Uh, map. Did I, it did I been... not get that at Trist? Trist, yeah. I gotta look it up because it's. I have it written down. I'm initiating the Happy Mass Salesman fucking quest line right now. <laughs> Time to sell off all the garbage you don't need so you can rearrange your inventory resin. All right, so I, I gotta get the mountain pass for the chicken, the chicken what for was, the mask. What was the book called? Mean? Uh, the book was called. Sorry, I lost the page. Uh, Something the book thunder. Was called, yeah, the Call of Thunder. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking for it here. Did I access the deep floor? What happened? I just got back. Uh, Quick, someone find I'm a baby. I'm not seeing it listed here. Do you have details of what the book actually is? Because I'm not seeing it on the list of the bookshop you... that you got it from. Uh, if it wasn't here, it was in Martorallo. A book containing poetry, historical accounts, information pertaining to a particular field of lore, diagrams, and notes on gnomish contrap- What the fuck? Oh, on gnomish contraptions, or just about anything that can be represented in text of pictures. A book of spells is- a Oh, that's just a basic fucking description of an of a book in D&D. &D. I'm sorry. Oh, the, the last I remember was you told me it was a story about, like, storm giants calling down thunder. Yes, okay, okay. Uh, that one is worth 150 gold pieces, that one. Ooh. He's willing to buy it for. Well, Alright, sick, I read it. Yeah, yeah. alright. Uh, we do, we might want to hold on to it purely for a gift, but you can sell oh. it for the gold instead oh, if you, you wish. Do you rather believe it's better as a gift? 
I'm purely saying. What language is it written in? Common. Common. Okay. Right, right. Shahalem says it actually was traded from one of the goblins. Uh, oh, at, oh, the Darn. shield. Oh, it yeah. was the right, the shield, shield for the yeah. book. It is still right. 150 gold, though, because it is similar to another book that I have listed, and it's that's the price I'm going to say it's worth is 150 gold. If you think gold. it's better, we keep it. I Above game, if you think it's better, we keep it as a gift, a, a tradable gift, I'm willing to be down with that. Yeah, I think that's why he wanted to get it appraised. So we know yeah, roughly the value. It's not like, hey, we're going to trade you this book that's worth three copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, if, if, if this thing's 150 gold, this is a good book. We're going to keep this for trade. Um, uh, Sir Gull would also like to, sorry, uh, catch you. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm still thinking. Um, while we're at the bookshop, Sir Gull would like to buy a small book of, uh, sea shanties, however. Sea shanties. Okay. Whalers uh, on the moon carry a harpoon. Carry a harpoon. But there ain't no whale. So he tells tales of seeing a whale, dude. You find a, it's not a very large book, but it's a thin book of Martyrolian, uh, Sea shanties for twenty five. They have pieces. terrible sea shanties. For how much? Twenty five gold. <laughs> Good books, God, are you books are expensive, me? guys. I don't know what to uh, tell you. They're I'll, hard I'll to make. Down. I'll put it. I'll put it down for them. I'm I'm looking at the camera right now. Books are hard to make in ancient times. Like I, they're incredibly difficult to make. Gaius will like aimlessly just put down the twenty five gold. Uh, thank you, okay. Master Gaius. Oh no problem. Though I will admit it's not really for me. Oh, it's fine. It's a purchase for a friend. And I hand him the book. All right. Milo, do you have any idea of what you want to purchase for trade? Honestly, um, I wonder how useful, uh, how candles, how useful candles would be. Because it's wax and I'd figure in the desert they're not going to get that much. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Because that's been kind of my thing and I kind of like it. Um... But um, maybe a mix of like regular to ornate. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, easy enough. I would say for a nice, like really ornate candle, it probably would be about one silver, whereas your more simple candle would be one copper. I'm gonna say you gain a pound per like 10 candles because they technically have no weight, but once you have like a <laughs> thousand of them, they're gonna weigh something. So, um, they're gonna go in the bag of holding. I guess there's and, and, and there's have. no way there's no way really to tell the quality of worth, is there? Besides um, like the the quality of wax and if they're colored and if they're larger, if they you know if they're meant more for ceremony, they're gonna be a little bit more expensive, which is why right. they're silver. The more mundane ones are going to be your simple, like, you know, white stick candles that you sure. can either put in a lantern or you can put in a, you know, a sconce, stuff like that. Milo out here just trying to burn shit. Hey, <laughs> it's our calling card, remember? Oh, is it? <laughs> ever since the, ever since the carriage in Eastonvale, yes. Would um, you like to buy candles? I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to stick it's around fine, shopping fine, for fine. too long, so it's like... <laughs> I don't want to hurry however, up, but I kind of want to hurry up. It's it's fine. I, I'm just struggling to figure out how many would be worth carrying just for, you know, let's just do, I don't know, 30? With 30 with, candles? Okay. I don't I don't think that would overdo it. So. I'll say 1.5 pounds, and if you're going for 30, then I'm going to say three silver pieces for 30 candles. Okay. Uh, let's see, because I wanted to get nice ones that would be worth trading. Okay, if they're if you want really fancy candles, that's gonna yes. be three gold then. That's fine. Okay. Um, food. Uh, how many rations do people believe we should have to make us through the day? Good question. I have, I have sixteen right now. Oh, I, I meant like anyone who like works at the general store who's like, hey, we're going to X place. How many pieces of food do you think we should have? Uh, let me count that for you. Uh, if you say you're going from Oasis to Genjifa Strix, they say that it's probably going to be... They say probably 10 days worth of ra ra rations is a good rations. amount to have. 10 days rations. worth of rations, don't you know? All right, so I'm going to buy another... I'm going to say I'm going to buy another six, day another six uh, bits of rations. Okay. Uh, out of curiosity, 
Velocity. The horses that we're getting, do they also come with saddle, tack, all that? Oh yeah, everything. Okay. You're gonna okay. get everything with them. You get them to Ganjifa, by the way. They say to relinquish them there because they won't survive the harsh landscape of Delvaria. Fair enough. Yeah. Jesus, tap dancing Christ, I'm at 202 pounds and I'm still not uncumbered. There's a stable master in Ganjifa who you know works with kind of the royal family, um, and they'll collect the horses and exchange them. It's basically like just a rental service. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, I am ready to go whenever you are. I so am I. Well, shall we head out then? Oh, I think we're all set. All right. Oh, just to double check, I'm really quickly uh you're good do, 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 do. uh i personally would like to buy more map paper okay you got it how much map paper would you like to buy how much is a piece of map paper which i'm assuming is just like a page of vellum right if you want paper paper it's gonna be different if you want parchment like the actual like um like waterproof more waterproof stuff yeah, like vellum. Vellum. That will be... Checking here. Uh, silver piece per page. If you want, like, a big sheet, I'm going to say it's about it's about four silver each. Okay. Um, I will get... We'll say uh, ten of the regular size pages. Okay. So that'd be one gold one or gold. ten silver. Yeah. yeah. Uh, real quick, I'd like to get eight rations. How much was that going to be? That's uh, five silver per ration, so if you want to get eight, it's going to be four gold. Cool. Sorry. I am completely done. You're all good. If you guys want to get through the stuff. I'm not, I don't want to rush you, like, hurry you, but it's more hey, like, hey. let's not get stuck on this because yeah, it's yeah. kind of, you know, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it too hard. Yeah, I just Help. wanted to get map paper because specifically, as we've reiterated, yes. there are no maps of this place, so Iskin's going to map it out as we go. Cool. You're going to try. <laughs> I will die trying, Monty. This is this you. is the one goal my character has. Stay as I cock my gun. All right. I will Excellent. cock my map. Well, without any further ado, uh, for the sake of brevity and for the sake of ease, you all gather your supplies back at the castle, along with candle staff, uh, as well as the rest of your companions. Uh, all of your goods are provided, as well as the gifts that you have been entrusted with. You have a crate that contains a griffin egg, uh, as well as a box of letters intended for uh, Aya as well. That you have been entrusted with, as well as, I believe, Strigal, you have a letter from the captain of the guard for his daughter, if you Correct. run into her as well. Uh, so you've all obtained those items there with you, and you all gather around Candlestaff, who then teleports you to Oasis. Uh, Oasis uh, is a, and I will ping it out for you here, because I'm going to move the map here. Bridge City. Bridge it is. City. It is. It, in fact, is uh, built you know, partially into a bridge. Uh, however, the moment you teleport, you realize immediately the landscape you might be contending with as you begin to see the mouths of large plateau canyons. Uh, kind of awaiting you to the east. Great. Meat. Ah, Utah. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> um, <laughs> however, uh, upon your arrival, uh, Candlestaff gives you his regards, wishes you best on your journey, uh, and leads you, points you in the direction of a stable where you are able to obtain a, a horse for each of you. The horse is packed with feed as well, saddlebags, which are full of horse feed, actually. Mm. Uh, and they're all easily mountable. They're all very well trained. Uh, and as you guys set out, heading into the unknown, we move you guys on to the map as I'm going to go over your travel. So for those of you guys who are wondering, we are now expediting travel um specifically i've mentioned this to the players i want to be transparent here because i know people are going to give me shit i've talked with the players we're expediting some travel if just nothing happens just to make it simpler uh and also just to focus on things that are more interesting however if there is a point of interest we will stop and the players can interact with whatever they want however if just nothing is happening we're just going to kind of go day by day and just like 
you know, summarize a bunch of days in a single kind of thing. Does it make sense to everybody? Yep. Cool. Yep. Right. Right. Yep. So, Copy that. of interest, as you all set off, I'm going to move you to a completely mysterious map. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, mysterious, mysterious map. map. Mysterious map. Mysterious, mysterious map. map. It's, really oh, mysterious. Dark, it's so oh, mysterious oh, that it's just oh, no. dark. My aether points. I can't fly around here on my mount now. Fuck! No. Oh god, it's, everything is pitch black. I need my aether oh, there it turns. Is. Also, it's huge. Can it's, we just it, say? Well, most countries Every are map big. Every is huge. So, Mark, some countries are small. I said most countries are big, which makes both of our statements correct. <sighs> you pedantic fucks. <laughs> most oh, are big. But Mark is the small. most pedantic. <laughs> wow, Mark didn't argue that. Weird. Nope. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was I was to <laughs> deny that one? Oh, I'm sorry. It's my badge of honor right there. <laughs> sorry, give me just two seconds here. I have a scroll that arrived in the mail accepting me honorably into the society of pedants, so I'm happy to wear that badge. So, yes. Iskan uh, and yes. the rest of you, <laughs> as you begin to travel, no border stop at all. Oh. It's kind of eerie. There's absolutely nothing. And your first couple of days of travel, which I will say right off two rations at this point. All right. Yahoo. Assuming, yeah. obviously, Milo, you have the water spell prepared. You have yep. water, so you're good. Yep. Uh, the moment you get deeper into this country, when you set to rest at night, the horses have little to nothing to eat. The grass here is dry and harsh, and while they do try to eat it, it doesn't seem to provide any nutrition, but the feed definitely does. You begin to understand why that is probably the main export for those traveling, or at least briefly through the country. Uh, for whatever means necessary. The landscape is... It shifts between massive canyons that create these unsettling valleys that make you feel almost enclosed and vulnerable at the same time, and then immediately open up to a yawning plain of flat brown earth with little more than the errant shrub and the odd thin tree speckling the landscape. The further in you go, which Mark in Mark off another ration, the wind begins to buffet you. Harsh wind laced with sand that kind of kicks up your clothing and musses your hair. Further still, on the following day, the heat begins to come. This land is warmer than Hearthland, warmer than Motorallo, and certainly warmer than Eason Vale. Though it's not enough now to cause you any trouble, you get the sense that you're here in the summer, and it could get much hotter on certain days if the gods have abandoned you. Oh no! The following day, you begin to see something on the road. Before, you were simply on a dirt road that has been tussled and erased by the wind here and there. However, eventually you do begin to see an actual road cobblestone at first you think but as you begin to find it it's actually made out of squares of very beautiful looking glass Whoa. in sh in autumn shades of almost blues mixed with oranges and reds and then you know broken up by greens and these sort of aqua colors hmm. and it's certainly impressive because it lasts multiple days as we move another tile you begin to see the telltale signs of other travelers moving this road. The signs of broken carts, long abandoned or salvaged for their wheels or other uh, offerings. You see random spots where perhaps once there was a water pump that has now run dry. And other places that give lean-tos that provide rest. Sometimes, some nights, you utilize these spaces, protecting you from the harsh winds, because it is, this, it is at this point that you realize while the days can get hot, it is the nights that can be just as ruthless in their coldness. We move another tile. Soon off the coast, you begin to see the sights to the northwest of a large river that cuts through the land. 
And on the other side, just briefly, you can see the hint of fresh vegetation that cuts through the land. Old phrases say the grass is greener on the other side, but perhaps in Delvaria, this statement is fact rather than metaphor. We move another tile. As you begin to see the opulent city, just off the crest of the hill as you make night's rest, it glows like a jewel in this arid landscape. You can see lights twinkling and sparkling in the distance, large extravagant buildings with strange constructions, round top buildings with large bulging spires that break the skyline. And on your fan final day of travel, you arrive in Ganjifa Strix. I will need to move off like of you. Should we write off 10 days worth of rations? Yes. Okay. I believe it should be from Oasis was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only eight rations you need to write off. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, sick. I was yeah. right then. <clears throat> Let me change the music here. As you trot in, immediately the energy of this place is very different. It is loud. Everywhere you turn, you see men of different backgrounds, women of different heritages, talking to each other in languages you've never heard before. You see Leonin speaking about, arguing about the cost of boarding their animals. You see a Triton currently fanning themselves, drinking water, copious amounts to try and survive this sweltering heat. And the large, beautiful buildings made with bricks of different colors of clay, almost a rainbow in their presentation. Only then crowned by banners, these long strings of colored flapping fabric that rustle in the breeze. You see, kind of lining the streets, Armored soldiers, but not soldiers as you would know them, more guards, wearing shiny, almost bronze, gold-like armor, embossed with semi-precious gemstones inside, standing at attention. It doesn't take a f it doesn't take a genius to recognize that these are not Delvarian soldiers. Their regalia is something different entirely. Any fabric that they wear, either a cape or perhaps embellishment, bears a symbol of a gemstone, a diamond-shaped gemstone. And it seems that the different color of gemstone of this fabric indicates the rank. And as you walk in, they kind of give you a glance, an acknowledging glance, almost as if, as if to say, welcome to the city. Don't try anything. However, what impresses you most as you make your way into the main thoroughfare is the massive spitting fountains of water, almost cascading like artificial waterfalls in the center of town, where you see street performers dancing about in flittering fabric and large, almost kiosk marketplaces selling jewelry and other goods. You can hear and smell the opulent gambling houses no windows or doors, just simply open to the errant night air, serving drinks and raucous laughter. As you find yourself in the middle of town, what do you all do? Oh. Well, this here place... we are, gentlemen, the jewel of the desert. This place is more stunning than I imagined. Huh. It's well, I suppose... bigger than I thought. Yeah, that's for certain. I suppose our first order of business would try to find some sort of uh, official to meet, no? I believe we're supposed to look for a guide uh, yes. to take us to the capital. But honestly, if we want to stay a night, maybe we should find an inn first. Point the ghetto barons. Aye, that would be wise. Maybe we can learn something from the locals listening in. And maybe get some water. And Looking some at the more horses. appropriate traveling clothes as well. 
right. It's actually... You, sorry, go ahead. You, you do need to return your horses at the stable that you were indicated. Mm. Ah, right. Yeah. Then let us do so. Yeah. And rode through the desert. Money is no is there any sort of uniformity with the style of clothing or is it just kind of everything? Everything. Though you do uh, notice sure. a lot of the travelers seem to be wearing, you know, uh clothing that kind of covers their skin, probably to protect them from the sand, which is mm. very like blustering. In fact, as you were traveling, anyone who was not wearing, you know, something to cover most of them, you, you were affected by it pretty bad. You get the sense that the wind picks up, it can be just hellacious. Ow. Uh, yeah, you're actually doing pretty good, Gaius, because you have fur. It's just you have to shake it out every night, which is a bit rough. And Escan, it's he's, a little rough for you. His skin is yeah. way dimmer than it has been. He looks very dry. Just you crusting. Look, yeah, <laughs> you're crusting up a little bit. If someone uh, goes to yeah. give him a handshake, his whole arm falls off. <laughs> no <laughs> thanks. Interestingly Crap enough, shit, I'm out. a lot of colors. Like people are wearing very, like very mm. bright clothing here as well. Um, would it seem like there's a, a like a, a even semblance of a caste system of like merchants wearing nicer clothes and people working in the streets working lower clothes, or does it seem kind of a nice mix? A uh, pretty decent mix. I mean, okay. you have your your guards who definitely are wearing like probably the nicest stuff in town. It's almost unnecessary. <laughs> like they have no reason to be wearing like gemstones in their armor. It doesn't make any sense. Um, there definitely seems to be like various different merchants. You can definitely see who the most you know, rich ones are because they're, you know, they're not even riding in horses. They have like carriages. Um, but you do see like your average merchant with carts and they're wearing less nice clothes, but there seems to be a general sense of color here. There definitely seems to be a wide range. It's interesting. You don't see anyone who's really like outwardly poor, like anyone who seems to be like down on their luck. Okay. However, you'd probably have to look closer to the gambling houses for that. Mm hmm. However, as you make your way through town, you using the directions that you're provided by Candlestack, you do find the stable, which is a mega stable. It's a large complex almost um, that contains not just horses. Um, you see other beasts of burden. You see axe beaks. Uh, you also see um, other pack animals like goats, interestingly enough. Uh, you also see a massive bird like a huge bird not like an axe beak it has a long neck and a tiny head and like just a poofy middle section body and it has strapped to its saddlebags and clearly is owned by somebody do our, um, can i do a nature check to identify said bird good luck sure go for it does it have an equally Boy. small face yeah it has a tiny face good yes. Ooh, pretty good Let's go. Ah, uh, you, you, you've heard of these creatures because their feathers and their egg shells are coveted. This is an ostrich, a rather stupid animal that uh, <laughs> the, the the feathers are well co really coveted for quill making as well as other decorations and even fashion. Uh, the eggs are used for creating usually works of art. However, this one seems to be being purposed for for either riding or carrying like goods. It's hard to tell but it is currently drinking water as you all enter. Uh, also, a ton of horses, like just a, a ludicrous Do amount of different horses. Off that bird. So for Zito and Gaijin and anyone else in Texas, we've found medieval buckies. Oh, oh for fuck's God. sake. I'm all sorry, right, what, I, is a, I, what is a buckies? You're gonna have I'm, to, I'm, oh. getting online, I'm getting online to get me a fucking hoagie. I, that trip was long. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the stable master, who is a older, portlier man, um, he kind of takes the horses and writes down in a ledger and kind of, you know, makes small talk with you. And he goes, ah, is this your first time in Ganji for Strix, my friends? Oh, ah, yes. <laughs> and where do your travels take you? If you need a ferry to go up north, I can help you charter one. We are heading towards the capital. Oh, you're heading towards uh, Arcastoria, is it? Not too many people going out there, though uh, some of the locals say there's some sort of festival going on and they're making their way there. Can you spell that for us, Monty? Yeah, Arcastoria. Arcastoria. Gonna, I feel good about this one. I feel good oh. about it. Gaius. God dang it! Oh, oh, Gaius. Oh. Yeah. Half of that you understand. Arc Historia. Arc, you don't know what that means. It could just mean arc in common. But Astoria basically means like 
fortress or kingdom, basically. It's kind of a catch-all giant word. Yeah. The Ark part, you don't know what that means, but Astoria means, like, kingdom. The, the Ark is foreign, but the rest of that word I understood. The, Give, um, giving away that he speaks giant. Yeah, mm. the Sable Master goes, Ah, the Ark is from the ancient Delvarian tongue, meaning throne. It basically means the kingdom of the throne. Ah. Uh. If you're heading about that way, you're probably going to want to charter a boar rider. Sorry, a boar did rider. you say a boar rider? Yeah, the only thing that can survive that far east is going to be a Delvarian boar. Where would we find one? Oh, I got... He kind of flips open a book and goes, I have a lady looking for some people currently making a caravan. I could point you in her direction if you're interested. If you would be so kind. Certainly. Uh, her name is Heather. Uh, she hangs around by the Golden Dish. It's a gambling house near the edge of the city. Oh, shit. I, I, I lean down over to, uh, to Milo. It's gambling. Boss, what is? Oh. What what uh, no I, I said to you what's gambling oh what's gambling um I I think it's a place where people go and play really simple games and lose all their money a challenge you say not the kind you might be interested in guys more <laughs> like look at a couple of cards and make some guesses and then lose all your money it's less of a test of skill than it is luck also like any other game just random chance. I mean, well, there's obviously some skill to it, but it comes with age and experience. <laughs> guys, to... the guy throws his fist into his head. A challenge, then. I was about to say, Monty, when do we go get? When do we get to play backgammon? Oh my god! I, <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish, dude. There was so I've... above board. There is a game called Three Dragon Ante, which is in the, the yes. Forgotten Realms. Hey. Yes. There is yes. there is a version of that game that you can actually play. I own it in person, and it's so mm. much fun to play in a D and D game. And I wish there was a way to play it on Roll Twenty. Please, it'd be but, so fun. But <laughs> I digress. I, 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 I'm, putting, can we I'm putting my I'm putting my arm. I'm, putting, I'm like laying my arm on my leg as I look to you, Monty, and I wiggle my eyebrow. Triple triad when. All right. Oh, oh uh, God, oh the God, stable oh master does turn to you and goes, I'm assuming you're selling the rest of the feed that the animals have? Yes. Are you wanting money or do you want barter? If you're heading east, you'll probably want barter, but if you intend to gamble, you'll probably want coin. I would say I barter then. Think, yeah, that's probably wise. Okay. Speaking, speaking of, what actually is most in demand the farther east we go? Uh, anything from the ocean is good. Uh, I know that seashells are a particular fancy. Um, wood is valued, uh, long pieces, usually made for halves of weapons. Um, I'm trying to think of what else right now is in demand. It's been a little strange since the war ended. Things have kind of quieted down. Uh, glass is valuable. Glass and wear is hard to come by. Also harder still to get through. The majority of uh, Del Barrio, but uh, you can find kind of anything. Anything that you just cannot find in a desert is worth its weight in gold, really. Looks so at like 30 candles. <laughs> so they're looking for wood for weapon hafts, even though the war is over. Yes. It still requires for tools as well, like axes and pickaxes. Pick oh, okay. Guy holds, too. Guy yep. holds up all three of his axes in one hand. <laughs> not, uh, not to be one to steer you off of your path, but Delvaria is a very dangerous place. So have Guys, we have been told. Friendly, so access. far. Well, we haven't met Delvarians yet. We have. Ah, I'm Wave. very sorry. Wow. He kind of looks at you guys and goes, you're not Delvarian. I don't know. People have been telling me I am. Hmm. He kind of he kind of cocks his head, not in a dismissive way, but more of like a I think you might have been lied to kind of way, but you know still is polite. And he goes, Damn. he hand, yeah, uh, he hands you off what appears to be a wrap of uh, leather that contains what appears to be uh, dried meats, exotic dried fish actually. Ooh. 
right. as well as a bottle of Elkmarian sherry that you may add to your inventory. Ooh, nice. As oh, nice. That sounds delicious. Who's holding on to and these? Nutritious. Specifically, the fish appears to be ocean fish. Actually, like a dried mm -hmm. ocean fish. Oh, shit. Right. I'm holding on to the sherry. Yeah, I, yeah, I you should are. not hold on to that. I will eat it. <laughs> However, he does point you in the direction of the Golden Dish, which is uh, a gambling house, and says, Her name is Heather. She'll probably be with her beasts. Can miss her. I'll appreciate it. Of course. Thank you, sir. She uh, must be in a hope... state of zen. I uh, hope I see you again. Uh, was there anything? <laughs> Sorry, that just, that just sounded Ooh. really like. Oh, oh yeah. Would that even be worth inciting? Because no, you take that at face value, my guy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I see you again. You guys are heading east. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I say, in... my fine woman, you wouldn't happen to be a boar rider, would you? I am indeed Heather, the boar rider. Uh, quick save. <laughs> Do you guys want to try and find the boar rider right away? What would you guys like to do? Let's 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 nip that in the bud. I say go find the boar yeah. rider. Oh yeah, and then, then we can okay. then we can look for a place to settle down after we yeah. get our passage right. booked. As you make your way through the city streets, uh, there's so much light. It's it's ridiculous, and like the lanterns are either lit by you know natural fires. Some of them are just magical in nature, just like persistent dancing light spells. That has clearly been provided by a, like whoever lives in the area. It's almost like there's so much peacocking. That's the best way to describe the city. Imagine every rich person was in one place peacocking how rich they are. I equip my sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, it is obnoxious. Uh, so much so that you don't even realize that, like, you know, you don't even know what time it is anymore because the light is just so bright. Oh, uh, however, you do make yourself, you know, following the directions provided, make your way through alleyways, which are almost as opulent as the main roads, kind of ducking and dodging uh, merchants riding on their horses or carts, or, you know, a guy walking with two ladies on either arm, regaling them a story. Eventually, finding yourself in a more lived-in space, uh, you see a myriad of tents that have been set up, uh, large kind of yurt style tents as well as just your standard, you know, what you guys are carrying. Uh, it is, however, as you are walking down here that you hear a yell and hear Rides! Four rides! Heading to the east for the Grand Hunt! Anyone interested? And you see this. Oh, the yo, art. Oh, oh, we got art? Holy crap. Art? A and also yo? Yo, Art? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, yo. Shoot. oh, oh, what oh nice! Look at that big snore bubble. That's not a boar. That's a I, beast. I'm, I'm is... gonna, I'm gonna be dead ass with you. I, I didn't see the person on top of the. That's <laughs> 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 the boar calling out. <laughs> you see, as you turn the corner, a massive. You've seen pigs and boars before, but they're like dog sized. This boar is larger than an elephant, maybe even it twice looks... as large. It is a chonky lad covered in thick brown fur with large tusks, uh, some painted, uh, one cat wearing very bright, equally as bright colors. Uh, behind it, you see another boar currently sleeping on its side, and behind that boar, you see a little baby boar that just has stripes Whoa. on it. Oh, oh no! Uh, however, this woman kind of waves at you as you all kind of look up and bewilder. Hey, foreigners! Interested in riding? Yes, madam. We seek passage to the capital. We were told you were heading that way. Yes, we haven't had many foreigners interested in the Grand Hunt, but I'm willing to take you. How many Perfect. are there of you? Five? Five? Yeah, five. Yeah. We have a five caravan going. Are you okay with traveling with others? It's better in numbers. We're used to that, yes. Alright, good. Cool. You watch as she slides down the boar, and the boar just kind of, like, wakes up and, like, blinks a couple times and just goes back to mm -hmm. sleeping. Uh, also, wait. Th th wait, there's six, six? There's six of us? Yeah, there's six of us. I was gonna oh, yeah, there is six of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know if, like, it was a bit or something, there's but Milo. we kept taking five, and I'm like, it's, oh, it's we okay. joking. Okay. It's, it's, doesn't matter? It's, no, it's, it's, it's okay, Milo. I understand. I know the woes of being short. I know they wouldn't pick me out and pick you instead. 
Uh, as also, a, I'm going to argue seven. As this Work woman slides person. down and approaches you, uh, you see that she's wearing sort of like a uh, a set of like leather gear. However, she's wearing like similar to you, Kai, actually, a poncho. However, this one is longer and goes down to almost her feet. She also has resting on her forehead a set of what looks to be goggles made out of leather and glass. Mm. Uh, and notably, she's wearing like a bunch of bangles on her arm. Uh, and notably, she is missing her other arm, uh, which mm. is hidden behind her poncho. But you notice it as she moves forward, there's nothing there. Uh, and as she approaches, she kind of puts a hand on her waist and she kind of looks at all of you and goes, Oh yeah, you guys are going to have really good stories, I can tell. I, uh, and why'd you gotta I, like, them a cooler I like your goggles. I like your goggles, too. I like the dome effect. You ever struggle because you have to look in two different directions sometimes? He kind of just looks at either of his companions on either side of him and then looks back at her. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. Huh? I've been a few uh, lizard folk from up north. Strange folk, but uh, resilient. Interesting, too. A little neurotic, but it's okay. Everyone's a little neurotic when they travel, I think. And she extends out of her hand and she goes, Name's Heather, boar rider. Is she still on the boar? No, she, no, slid, she slid down. down. She slid down. Oh, okay. Yeah. I missed that part, sorry. Uh, Milo will take it. Uh, Milo Brightbeam. Nice to meet you, Milo Brightbeam. You're a halfling, right? Yeah. Just kind of looks side to side for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, I, it's me. Good it's not a halfling. lie. I've seen uh, I've seen other halflings come by. Rare, rare folk. Usually head north. So they take ferries, but uh, not as uh, not as well fed, I think, as you. You seem like you could hey. actually take a hit. Oh, I was about to say to call me fat. No, you're all built. He's, he's, he's smiling. He's smiling. By the way, he's not taking it literal, like personally. You kidding me? Half the other halflings I've met look like a hawk would come down and just pick him off the ground. They probably did. That's probably how they went. Milo immediately looks into the air looking for circling buzzards. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you heading? Uh, like we mentioned earlier, we're heading towards the capital. You Arcastoria, the... then. Okay. Yes, yep. Arcastoria. You mentioned a great hunt? Yes, yeah, what is the that? grand hunt, yeah. Uh, it's a what festival held by the royal family. It's basically where a bunch of meatheads run around and kill animals for fun. Oh, goody. It's a little a more complicated than that. It's, yeah, it's a competition. It's basically a, um, it's a competition where warriors, groups of warriors, hunt down beasts. And whoever gets the best beasts gets invited to, apparently, the best feast. So I've been Got told. I just mm. grabs Otho by the shoulders and pulls him in. I yeah, hello. Yes. It's uh, held by uh, the, uh, what the fuck is his name? Uh, Razorback Redmond is Razorback the one Razorback Redmond. Yeah, he's one of the king's right-hand men. Oh, sounds fun. I'm going to like this place. Yeah? Hi, well, I'm one for challenge, and I'm one for sport. They so do like, like their R's here. All right, well, my fee uh, for riding is uh, I would like a bag of milk, please. Sorry, Monty, did you say a bag of milk? A milk bag doesn't of come milk in bags? You I've never heard of milk in bags before, Monty. What is wrong with you? Mm. I want a bag Canadian of milk. Canadian is showing. Could I get uh, probably... A bag or a bag? A bag, like a ah, leather I bag see. of milk. I see. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then six of you. I mean, I can. She looks behind her and she looks at the other board that she has and she goes, fit, yeah, three of you. The little guy could probably fit. Uh, and then cargo goes on the baby. She's kind of like, hey, like, kind of like measuring all you guys right now, hey, looking yo, at you. Hmm. Mark, uh, you gotta get some ketchup chips. I I'm, want. You know, I'm already on the store for it. So. Yeah, bag of milk. <laughs> uh, two chickens as well, if we're gonna be traveling that far. Um. <laughs> Does Eastcon uh, count? Uh, do you want those alive or, or does it matter? <laughs> yeah, it oh, matter. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need them alive for sure. You want to get them in cages, uh, and then probably I don't know. I mean, yeah, you could cover the food for the first big stop. Yeah, uh, suckling pig would be good. Salted as well. Wait, so you want the pig 
dead, but the chicken's alive? Yeah. Looks awkwardly at the boar. <laughs> so, now, now we you know you're, we're not eating about. him. He's to rides. No, I, I, that's not. Uh, never mind. Oh, actual cannibal, is, big ass boar. Is there a specific place we could pick these items up? Yeah, there's a market. Just try not to get scanned. I mean, I can go with you if you want. That would, that would actually be really helpful. <laughs> you seem, and I mean this, no offense. Like you don't really know what you're doing. Respectfully. <laughs> what? Double, double finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, she she like kind of like excitedly clenches her hand. She goes, "Oh, you guys are gonna be fun. I can tell." All right, uh, just give me a moment. I'm waiting for my pal to get back. Uh, once he gets back, I can go with you to the market. Sounds good. Yes, merchants tend to enjoy foreigners. <laughs> Easy to take advantage of. Strigal's just going to be this whole time kind of looking at the largest of the boar creatures and trying to identify if it was roughly the same size or same kind of creature that the he saw on the wedding night. It's terrifying. As you look at this thing, his was larger. <laughs> like, Whoa. almost like one-fourth larger, actually. Big. He's just going to take a moment to try and compose himself. As you kind of compose yourself, Heather kind of leans down and goes, his name's Humphrey, if you're curious. Oh. Uh, does he respond to c common? Yeah, he does. He's smart. Too smart. Uh, Strigal will kind of widen his eyes, kind of take a breath. Remember, you wanted to be here. And he'll take some crickets from his bag and try to feed it to Humphrey. Uh, <laughs> Feeding crickets. You kind of, like, <laughs> hold it out, and, like, nothing really happens. And you watch as Heather kind of walks up next to you and kind of goes... And kind of makes like a weird noise, and then immediately the eyes kind of split open, and it like slowly rumbles to one side. And it's interesting as it moves, you feel the ground actually shake as it rises <laughs> up to its full height. It is an impressive wow. beast, and Sergal, as you hold it, your talon, you just feel like warm saliva as yeah. it just like just like goes probably up like probably two inches from the elbow, and then just like pulls out and like whatever was in your hand is gone and is replaced with just thick saliva that just drips off of your hands. Hope you weren't yeah. wearing any rings. Looks at his arm of his robes. These were my nice clothes. The beast shakes its head and seems a little annoyed and kind of like actually like points its tusk and kind of nudges Heather and she goes, knock it off, come on. And it kind of like, you know, jostles him back a little bit. And he kind of sits back down. Still have all your talons? He'll count he's, them real quick. He's <laughs> gentle. Come on. He wouldn't hurt a fly. And she, like, pats him on the horns twice. Kai's going to lean into his robes and kind of whisper into them. You're still cooler work. So, uh... Hmm. You watch and she kind of looks at you. And at this point, you see, walking up behind uh, a bow and arrow shouldered is what I could only describe as a as a as a man who does who just he's wearing like a Corella Deville fur coat that is made entirely out of like brown fur of some kind of animal. It's not a different amount of animals. It's like all the same animal that's been patchworked together into this massive cloak, and it like actually drags across the floor. Uh, he's quite tall too. He's probably about like six feet tall, kind of you know, brown, tangled hair, dark complexion, um, and kind of dour look to him. Uh, he's got, like, traps on his waist, and he kind of walks up and looks and acknowledges Heather, and Heather goes, Ah, oh, there you are. I'm taking off. Can you watch the boars for me? And he just slowly turns and looks at all of you, and then slowly turns to her and nods. All right, good. We're good to go. <clears throat> all right, city time. Y'all ready? I think so. Off to get some <laughs> bags of milk. And chickens. And, and assaulted, assaulted pig. And assaulted pig, yeah. Suckling you know. pig, I think you said. Yeah, something we can fit in a bag with some salt, I think would be good. With the so, milk. I have to ask, because you're all weird as shit and a bit eclectic. Um, what brings you here? I mean, if we're traveling, it's best I know. We're couriers of a sort. Uh, we have been tasked with delivering a few messages to the royal family. Hmm. Yeah, the royal family don't really do messages, based on what I've heard. 
So, so we've noticed. What have you heard? They just don't take messages. I mean, I mean, you, you approach them, but most of the time people get turned away unless it's like they've been requested based on what I've heard. We still have to try. And, it's your and nothing else. Well, and in nothing else, my interest now lies in this whole little festival that's going on. Yeah, yeah. The grand, uh, the grand hunt is. Uh, it's a nice time. It's a nice excuse for people to go out and hunt monsters that have been terrorizing Delvaria for a while. So I'm here was, for it. I was about oh to say, God, what, I love this. <laughs> what kind of things do you usually hunt? Oh, like what do I hunt, or what do they hunt? Oh, just in general. Oh. Pfft. I mean, uh, the guy back there you saw, uh, his name's Bardish, by the way. Uh, Bardish. He's quiet. Yeah, Bardish. Uh, he specifically hunts uh, Kabarus. They're like, um, how would you call them? In... Assuming you're from Hearthland, because you came here by land, clearly. Um, like a possum or like a squirrel, like a big one. It's, it's like a monkey possum squirrel thing. Oh my god! Did that hit everything, Zito? <laughs> oh my god, shut up! <laughs> I mean, of course, there's the Devarian boar that you can hunt. The wild ones are pretty hard to take down. I mean, there's, like, sand dragons. There's, like, rhinos. We got... There's What's the... What's something that would get you an audience? This The purpose of this grand... Oh, man. I mean, we I could tell you when we travel. It depends. What did the previous winner hunt? I'm pretty sure they uh, they hunted a mind stealer, but those are really hard to kill. A and they're also not... A mind stealer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You guys are walking through the town as this is happening, by the way, and she's, like, kind of easily ducking away from people. And honestly, like kind of parting the crowds for you guys. Like, she clearly doesn't give a shit and isn't like, oh, I'm sorry. She's like, get out of my way! <laughs> like, she's very much like, move it. Jesus. Uh, she kind of turns, she goes, yeah, yeah, they're called mind stealers, because when they get too close to you, they kind of steal your mind. Does this sound like anything... <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> you would know in character? Okay. <laughs> no, not at all. They're a, a four-winged kind of bat-like creature with, like, like, eight eyes, and, like, they get close to you, and they, like, you can feel, like, your thoughts getting sucked out of you. Terrifying. Some, sometimes they attack people, but most of the time they just, like, get too close, spook animals. Actually, I want to ask, have you heard anything of any undead uh, farther east? Undead? Uh, nah, not really. Oh, well, alright. We've been around <laughs> to a lot of different places, and we keep running into them, or the remnants of them. I mean, I've heard of, like, skeletons, but I've never seen them. It's mostly just the stories, ghosts and things like that. Is what I'm assuming you're talking about, yeah? Uh, there's a lot, but yeah, it's kind of the gist of it. Yeah. Um, uh, probably the biggest threat that we probably encounter, hopefully we won't, is uh, gnolls. That's probably the worst you're going to see. Do any of us know about gnolls? Did we not no. see gnolls? I don't think so. No, uh, we saw we saw a were jackal. heard of gnolls. We saw or not a were jackal, but some kind of like Oh jackal right, the pseudo were jackal. Yeah, ja yeah. Yeah, jackal, jackal, jackal wears, wears. yeah, you meant jackal wears. That's what it was. Right. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, wait a minute, we like this sounds familiar, but not. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're um pretty vicious here. Uh, there's two groups of gnolls. There's the uh rip jaws, and then there's also the uh the green thorns. Rip jaws and the green thorns. Yeah, the rip jaws are a uh, common, pretty common null group name, but uh, they uh, they're pretty brutal. They'll raise villages to the ground, not even loot them, just burn it all to the ground. They like to ambush caravans and merchants and just kill them, smash all their goods, not even take it. They don't have the audacity to do that. Mm. They uh, worship. Uh, a god. Uh, what is it? Uh, crap, what is it called? Uh, they worship Nash, the god of destruction. Uh, 
Uh, what about the green thorns? The green thorns are nature loving ones, kind of druidic in nature. They worship Yidia, the goddess of nature. So they're they not that bad? I mean, it's relative, but they generally don't attack people, no. They believe that they can attack people because they have to uphold the balance that Yidia expects of all her followers. I They're mean, uh, pretty passive, almost to a fault, I would say. Do, do the two clans have any identifying markers? Uh, yeah. Uh, the best identifying marker is the fact that the Ripjaw clan will just fucking kill you, and the Green Claw and the Green Thorns will talk to you first. Hmm. It's pretty obvious, usually. And the Delvarian. <laughs> policing system they haven't seen fit to deal with this what's a pol what what are you talking about she seems genuinely confused by whatever that means it's like a countrywide guard <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so foreign holy shit wow this is gonna be interesting oh Hey, um, well, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here, uh, Palerinos. Uh, yeah, no. Um, even if anyone wanted to, that's never gonna happen. So there are no laws and nobody to enforce them even if they did exist? Oh yeah, there are laws, for sure. But, like, the gnolls are a problem. They're not, you know, they're not... Listen, Delvaria is a bit of a wild card. And you watch, it, she kind of flips around a person walking through the streets and then continues talking. This isn't your, um, as I've heard about it, your cities with your flashy guards and your laws and your bounty hunters. Most bounty hunters come out here and they die. That's how it works. Oh. Most criminals, if they're caught, well, if, either die from exposure before they get caught or if they're caught are killed. This isn't a game of rules. This is a game of survival, rich boy. You've entered an entirely different game. I see. Why is she talking that shit? She about to catch these hands. Well, I do not mean to offend, uh, especially our guide through difficult times, but it would seem your guards are far more well paid than ours. Oh, these aren't guards. She points towards one of them as they walk by. This is the jewel guard. They belong to basically whoever's the richest person. Who is the richest person here? So oh, Gan far. Ganjifa. He's the one who made this place. The Ganjifa family is the richest people. They create the jewel guard and they also create the law of this town. Basically, Ganjifa has an agreement with the Devarian crown that essentially Ganjifa gets to exist and use this place as a trading hub, barring any, you know, territorial disputes which the Varians have with their neighbors. I think recently there was one with Herthlin, which I think she kind of points towards you, uh, Strigal, and goes, I think you might be from. So during that war, you know, Ganjifa was still able to make trade and let the merchants through. But, you know, basically the deal is, you know, Ganjifa... I don't know, they have some sort of deal with, with the Delvarian royal family. And in exchange, the Delvarians, you know, specifically the royal family, uh, don't just invade and take over this place, essentially. It's sort of like a mutually agreed beneficial relationship. Mm. So this plutocracy benefits the Delvarian royals. And so long as it continues to do that, they continue to exist. Well, yeah, it benefits everybody. I mean, this place is not Delvaria, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, look at it. Granted, you probably don't have much of a comparison yet. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Perspective is part of the package when you're riding with me. Ah, here we are, the Marcus. And you see immediately a myriad of banners and shouting gentlemen trading rare earthen wares and pots. Very quickly, it is easy to procure your items with coin, luckily. They take any oh, tender cool. here. Yeah. How much does it run? Our legal tender. A uh, bag of milk is easy. It's like five silver. And it's like literally like almost like it literally is. And this is really gross and I'm sorry. It is a stomach filled with milk. 
tied in both oh, ends. All right. I mean, oh, that's oh, what, oh that's I, I thought it was going to be a bag. That actually makes is way it, more sense. Is it like milk lung? Uh, not milk lung. It's like clearly like the stomach is being used as the vessel to carry the milk. Yeah, gotcha. this is I'll, okay. I'll cover the cost of that. Okay. Nice. Uh, the chickens. So I'm, 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 I'm not no buying ketchup these. chips. Someone no, Eastgun, you are chicken. specifically buying nope. these. Well, what's a ketchup? I, I, are... I, will buy, I will buy them, and I will call this one Eastgun and this one Eastgun too. <laughs> one second, I gotta grab my Let's player's go. handbook. I put it away by accident. Wait, what's Eastgun uh -huh. backwards? Uh, Maxi, we've been over this. Mark. <laughs> we've been over this. What do you mean, this? Mark? Ma Eastgun backwards is Mark. No, it's not. Because oh. Mark backwards is cram, and that doesn't sound at all like Eastgun. I'm gonna call no, this that's one. That's what you cram. can do with these chickens, my dude. I'm gonna call this one cram. <laughs> and this one. I love cram. <laughs> and this Tune one, Mark. Gateway every Saturday. <laughs> I know there's a price for chicken, so I'm just checking that price. It is an item you can purchase in the game. Where are you? Well, chickens? if it's worth the price of chickens. Let's go back in time and get that one ba uh, basilisk monster and bring it here. <laughs> Is there a chicken? I thought there was a chicken price. Oh, thank God. No chicken. Ah! Perhaps we'll just have to get a different to... bird. Didn't you Did have to, to, like, homebrew a chicken into the game because D&D &D is vacant of chicken? Uh... I do have a price for. Oh, okay. A chicken is is literally two copper pieces. Oh, okay. that's nothing. Hey. Take it. Yay. Yeah, you get them in like a like a cage, and some feed is added too for your travel. I'll call uh, you. I'll call you <laughs> McNuggets and <laughs> six pieces. <laughs> yeah, Heather. As you buy them, and you like Heather looks at you and goes, "Don't name them. Don't make that mistake." Uh, uh, the pig will set you back three gold. Jeez. I'll I have I'll take care of them. Oh, you want to? Okay. Yeah. Chickens cheap. I'll... Pigs exclusive. I'll take care of that. Uh, I would also like to buy some sort of local style clothes while I'm here. Like sure. A, yeah. Maybe like, like a, maybe like a Sherwani mm. or a Kurta. Let me find that. Three Get years. some uh, Otho, yeah. Otho of Arabia vibes. Some some uh fucking heat resistant clothing. Prince Otho, and, and fabulous he, Ali. Yeah, something 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 with low thread count that uh, breathes a bit better in the desert environment. I'm trying to find. I got a poncho. I'm straight. All right, which one of us is gonna look like Brad from Lisa <laughs> at this point? And just if anyone gets that reference, high five to you. You play indie games. Nice. Lisa's pretty. To... It's coming out on Switch, the definitive version. Yeah. That's a, a, a weird oh, okay. thing. Sure. Guys, is going to look uh, like Norman Reedus off The Walking if Dead. If you guys would like to get uh, environment comfortable clothes, yes. it will set yeah. you back two gold per person to get oh, the easy. right clothing. Nope. Yeah, I'll put that down. I'm good. Uh, yeah, forget that. I'm going to uh, get snazzy. Yeah, Sherelle's going to get that as well. Yeah, I'm anyone who buys it. that, note that you have Delvarian traveling clothes, please. Mm -hmm. Delvarian traveling clothes. Tra I am how really is, how much Mark, we're going to enjoy our exhaustion when we get it. I'm a uh, lizard. It's four pounds for the traveling I'll be a lizard clothes. Too. So, so it's just literally uh, commoner's clothing, just with extra steps. Basically, yeah. It's it's specifically warm weather clothing. Yeah, it's specifically for traveling in specific environments. Eat. Oh, it's really funny because more... they have to specifically tailor yours, Milo, and they're like, uh, <laughs> give us a second, and they run in the back. and It's, it's, it's just a giant blanket over a kid. <laughs> <laughs> they get the, they forget the tape. Cut out a hole. <laughs> we'll just cut this out of the, uh, the eyes. They snip off the lower half of mine and just wrap it around, Milo. <laughs> it's, it's, the fun, it's, the, it's the terminal montage cartoon of Link putting on oh, the fire tunic. <laughs> just pull, putting oh, on the God. hat and then oh, ripping God. off the face. Milo's wearing the the female dancer outfit from Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, Whoa, easy now. Yeah. <laughs> Monty, showing I off those like hips. To, they don't lie. I would like to buy more rations since we went through so many. Sure, for sure. Oh, yeah, can we buy rations buy. here? Because I'm gonna die. I'm gonna just it. restock. I'll buy the eight that I used. Right, Same. You got it. Four gold. As you buy I'm the food, uh, 
as you buy the food, Heather does point, I was like, oh, we're traveling with Bardiche, by the way. I hope you guys don't mind uh, meat. I oh. don't think we do. Okay. Well, oh, actually, if you'd like, I know how to cook, and I can cook you something you've never had before. If uh, I don't know. He's, he's just, he's kind of nervous about, I don't know, stepping up and, and just talking about it. Uh, sure. I, I don't know how well your foreign cooking is going to do here, but... Listen, you, you, put a, you put a flank of anything in front of me, I'll make it taste goodly. Okay. I should probably get some spices. I'll, I'll pick that up. Okay. Anything else anyone else would like to buy before you guys? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna grab more, good. I'm gonna grab more food and then that'll be it for me. And I'm set. Alright. So as you all collect your things, spend a night in a very nice inn. Do you guys want to do any gambling or would you guys like to just head out? I'd like to do a little bit. Okay. Uh, do you have? Are you proficient with a gambling item or do you have a gambling I, item? I actually have a card set. Okay, go ahead and roll for me a card check, please. Oh, I'm so sorry. Money, real quick, can we convert money here? Uh, yes, you absolutely can if you want to switch it over to platinum. Cool. I've got way uh, too much gold in my pocket. Right. So I got, uh, so just roll a d20. Yep. If it has right, a here. bonus to it, if you have it listed, then you can use that. Okay, well, I don't, so I'm just okay. going to roll straight. Straight roll. 19! Oh. The poor man. Uh, you play cards against a moderately wealthy uh, merchant guy. Clearly, like, younger, new in the business. He's got, like, a girl with him. He's trying to impress and is buying... He even buys you a drink, actually. Uh, however, you absolutely destroy him with a 19, and he rolled a 7. Uh, oh, no. Netting you decent chunk of money. You get 40 gold from him. Damn. Holy, Holy shit! Holy man. Shit mind. man. Yeah, you rob him blind. He made back all the money we just spent here and then some. I, I sure shit. fucking did. Holy fuck. No, I'm I'm pulling out. I, I made my money back, guys. Yeah, you, you guys will, like, shake his hand and actually buy him a drink and thank him Good for game. the competition. You get the sense that he's a little bit too into the drink that he might not be even aware of how much in the hole he just ended up in. Oh, oh that's fucking oh. awesome. <laughs> for for you, not for him. Not for him. Oh uh, yeah, clearly. But Caius, I like how Caius doesn't know. So he just like pulls out a king and he just goes, is this card good? And fucking wins. <laughs> At, at, as you get, like, once you get 20 gold from him, his lady friend is like, yeah, I'm out, and, like, leaves, actually. <laughs> oh, like, no! Oh, Took his money oh. and his girl. Yeah, she left. She's like, forget this. Oh, no! I'm gonna give that guy an extra drink just to cope him through the night. For yeah. sure thing. He's he gonna fucking it. die. <laughs> <laughs> you hate to uh, see it. Anybody else want to do any gambling? Are you good? Yeah, I'm fuck good. it. Kyle play some cards. All right, go ahead and roll a card check. If, you, if you're not proficient, just roll a uh, 20. He's proficient. Are you? Okay. Fucking 10. 10. Okay. <laughs> uh, you actually make almost even. Uh, you earn two golds in your gambling. It. It, it's, a, it's a heated back and forth. It's very close, but you earn two gold. Can I, can I, I get a situation? Can I get a situation just like fucking Gaius was playing Go Fish? <laughs> they were playing poker. <laughs> could could I do some gambling with an ulterior motive? Sure, go for it. I, I, like I, want, I want to first, after we, we get some uh, place to stay for the night, I would like to don my new traveler's clothes. I would like to use my disguise kit um, to disguise myself as just like a regular human. Uh, mm. And then I would like to use, I would like to utilize my uh, Master of Intrigue ability that lets me uh, unerringly mimic the speech patterns and accent of creatures that I hear speak for at least one minute. So I would mm. like to try and pass myself off as a native Delvarian or a native person of this place to blend it. in so people are more comfortable talking about things they wouldn't normally around a foreigner. Okay. And I want to try and find out the goings-on. Go ahead and roll for me a deception check with advantage. 
deception yeah. advantage. My deception is good. It, it better be good. It, it's all right. I I took that guy's girl and his money. He, he hey, that's, another, that's <laughs> another seventeen or nineteen rather. All right. You blend in seamlessly. What type of information are you looking for? I'm I'm looking for I'm trying to pick up rumors uh coming out of uh the different uh the different uh places further in uh of Delvaria, like r any any sort of rumors going on or any any uh unrest possibly even. Okay. Just just uh, rumors. You don't hear anything about unrest. Uh, however, you do hear unrest from the people you're talking with. Uh, specifically, when you play at a table with about three other men, uh, two of which are Delvarian, the other one is a foreigner. Um, you're unable to pin where they're from. Uh, the two Delvarian men actually are kind of in a bit of an argument, specifically. Not like a heated argument, but like a bit of a, a disagreement. Um, one of them is just like, hey, it was better, you know? Like, during the war, I sold so many more weapons it was great but now things have slowed down and most people are back to making their own and the other man goes well it's good now we can make our trade through those damn hearthlings won't look at us like we spat in their salad generally there seems to be a bit of a separation between those who are content with the end of the war and others who are a bit more salty about the end of the war interestingly enough mirroring hearthland in many instances hmm. Okay. Should I also roll a playing card set? Did yeah, if you're playing cards, you gotta, yeah. Uh, I am, in fact, proficient with it as well, so... Uh, when you, Connor, it... when, you, when you initially said, can I play with an ulterior motive, I thought you were trying to say, I want to lose on purpose, that way if I roll bad, I win. <laughs> <Hey>. I <laughs> thought you were planning strip poker or something. Wah, 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 wah. Uh... So what is that uh, dexterity or twenty plus? Uh, that's gonna be with I think insight, dexterity, wisdom. I think wisdom is probably more. Keen. Wisdom. Yeah, because okay. you're reading it's your opponent. Gonna, it's just gonna be uh, flat plus two. Okay. Damn. Oh, shit. That's a. Too <laughs> anyway. Okay, not as much as Gaius, but you walk away with 30 gold from a big table. Jesus! Nice Telentura one. is with you. Yeah. You guys are all going to have to convert. Man, fuck Telentura. I, I was about to say, I, I actually, oh, I yeah. actually need my... to like lower my weight capacity by converting some money because I'm a little yeah. bit too rich right now. You guys, I'm If you guys fine. are in the cities, you guys can convert it. Um, Otho, as you are, you know, you hear general discontent. You also hear something very interesting that kind of picks up, pricks up your ear a little bit for Kai. As you hear some individuals mentioning, as ah, those damn people up in Trey Skaldon worried about things changing. You think a twig would move and they'd freak out. Something's really got them on edge. So there's un there's some sort of uh, goings on in Trescaldon. Trescaldon, yeah. The borders are being more looked at and things like that. They seem to mention. Borders of Trescaldon are under scrutiny. Ha uh ha. -huh. Hmm. Where's Trescaldon again in relation to where we are now? Uh. I that would be probably an e scan inquiry because East Point uh, might know. Yeah. I'd have to like actually dig it out. Hang on. Yeah. I'm trying to see if you actually said. I think it was northeast. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. I remember because they, uh, the Stitch Sisters specifically said look to the east. Is it. It's definitely so Triscald they said look toward the east was their thing. So but I don't know east of what. When was that? Uh do you want the actual date of the episode? Do you have it? That would be great. Yeah. It was uh it was episode twenty seven that era that we did on the eighteenth of January. I'm 
Sorry. Yeah, I don't have it. I don't have it there. We will get a break. Yeah, I know. I've been trying to find it. Oh, no, no, no. I was I was going to ask. I I forgot the convert what gold to uh, platinum to gold or gold. Uh, If you got 40 gold, it's four platinum. So it's a zero, basically. Ten to one. Ten to one. one. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, my God. I have a lot of platinum. (laughs) Oh, my God. There you go. go. All right. Is there anything else anyone would like to do before you guys find an in-room for the night before traveling tomorrow? I was going to ask, are we getting individual rooms or is it like one big room? Uh, you could get a very nice big room if you want. It would be more expensive, but it'd probably be cheaper since you're in a big group of six people. Fuck it. Let's do it. Okay. Big group group room will be four gold for everybody. Okay. It's uh, like Combined four gold or four gold each? Four gold for everybody, yeah. Okay. So as the group, so we each pay a half a gold? That's, that's not. I'll just uh, pay the for room the room. You is, got it, Otho. <laughs> for the price, you expect the room to not be that great, but it's actually quite lavish. There is a bunch of couches, a you know, a bunch of beds. There's about like eight beds in the space, actually. Um, that's separated out into like a like a balcony that looks out onto the glimmering cityscape of Ganjifa Strix. You can see the river cutting through to the north. Uh, and you can see past it, there are some probably some trees and foliage. Uh, you can also see to the south and the east the very arid landscape. And there is, you know, drinks are not provided, but there is like a hookah pipe. There is also like a very open sort of space as well. And it Did is you say a hookah cold. pipe. Yeah, like a yeah. like a like a pipe that you smoke with. Yep. Is huh. there hmm. a restroom? Yes, or there is a. Area? There is a bathing area with a pump in it, uh, and also like wash basin things like that. that seems is to be it enclosed? Uh, it is. Yeah, you can close the door behind you. Okay. So at one point during the night, Iskan's gonna go into that restroom and close the door, and you guys will hear the sounds of scrubbing for like twenty minutes, <laughs> and then Aww. he's gonna come out, and all of his colors back. He's right. bright colored again. And he scrubbed off all the uh, the dry skin, yeah. essentially forced molting, um, both in uh, in uh, response to the state the the statement from um, oh god what was her name Colette Heather he- no oh, Colette got it um, Odette who's, Odette that's what it was thank yeah. you um, who said you need a good molt and also the ten <laughs> days of traveling through the dry weather yeah definitely um, and Made he'll that just more sort obvious. of He'll try and be kind of sneaky about it, and he'll just, like, casually chuck the dry skin over the back. <laughs> 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 uh, hey, hey, gang. Yeah. Someone's going to find that and have an attack of some sort. Nah, it's going to blow away in the wind. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, what are going to see dust. that rolling through the desert and have it's an gonna land, of some sort. It's going to land in the city streets, and the kids are going to poke at it with a stick. What up, Zito? Gaius is going to, like, grab Otho and, like, pull him to the side, actually. He looks oh, a little concerned. Here we are again, Mr. Agni. Yeah, I, I know. I know I josh with you a lot, but please hear me out. I'm actually kind of worried, considering that we're walking around and money seems very much an important asset to this whole town. How bad is it that I have this much money? He shows you that he has 15 platinum and 52 gold. Um, I would say just keep an eye on your purse as he holds up his 14 platinum and 205 gold. <laughs> Meanwhile, Milo's in the room clinking around his 35 platinum. <laughs> what the fuck? How do I have the... To... Oh, right. Scroll. Why are we rich? <laughs> I, am, rich. I am not... You I am a caster. Hunting. I will never be rich. <laughs> I got all this money and nothing to spend it on. Uh, listen, I, really... I will take it. I have shit to do with money. I'll take all your money. So, as you so, guys... I bought decline... two people. Recline for the night, consider your wealth, and consider your path ahead and your new guide. That's where we're going to take our break. Oh, oh I got to use the restroom. I'll be right back. Same. I'll be right back. I love how in, in, in the meme Stovari is Australia. Art uh, is by that Art Jack. I was just about to ask. Yeah. Who was Fuck very you, excited to take this on. I was like, Jack, I got a piece for you. You're going to love it. You talented piece of garbage. Welcome to the halftime show, guys. What up, y'all? Kai forever broke. Being a wizard isn't cheap. You damn right.
up, college boy? Are you calling me a college boy? College boy. Me on Naufa. Thank you for the 1500 bits. Uh, Bosco, you're very loud again. You're peeking your microphone. I, I didn't. All right. I will fix. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with your mic today, bud. I don't either. I'm going to throw something at a wall. To quote some particular dwarves, we're rich. Apparently. Uh, Killer Chansey, thank you for the 10 bits. As a fellow wizard, I know the tragedy of the scroll toll. Yeah, you, you get it. You feel me. For now, thank you for the 100 bits. Welcome to being a wizard, Osco. Extort other wizards for spells. That's what I do. You still have to pay for that shit. And it's a stupidly expensive process in 5e. Hello, I'm back. I just got my first spell thing transferred over in Pathfinder, and they were like, yeah, it'll take you, like, two hours and six gold. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. I'm about this. Like, let's go. Six dicks, I'll think of the ten bits. Sure, there's a bag of milk, but is there also a bag of bags? Yeah, it's called a bag of holding. The Drifter of Time and Space, thank you for the bits. Take the last of my Electrum. Oh, God. I don't understand. Uh, if Delvaria is Australia, I'd like to say good day to the Unexpectables. Well, thank you, Asher, for the bits. Appreciate you. You all right, you all right there? No. I'm you good there, buddy? I'm never okay. It's fine, though. I'm never okay. I'm not okay. Uh, Burna Vaughn, thank you for the 100 bits. I extorted an Archmage for two third-level spells and one second-level spell. Uh... Wait, stop scrolling. Gosh darn it. Uh, and the ink and the paper to record them, uh, it's a matter of leverage. You're not trying hard enough. Well, thank you for the 100 bits. Um, clearly, I'm not trying them hard enough. Uh, yes, I would love for a wizard just to make my spell book. That'd be great. And not spend any of the gold necessary. Callum, thank you for the five bits. Alongside the bag of milk, Heather's also going to need some poutine, ketchup chips, and a beaver tail. Why a beaver tail? <laughs> I don't understand anymore. They they actually sell those here in New York. I know oh, what that is. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> is it like a pastry? Isn't it a pastry or something? Yes, yeah, a pastry. Yeah. Uh, Vina, thank you for the tier one sub. Milo has enough money to take care of his seven husbands. And Nolan Void with 100 bits, great. Now with the new NPC, all I can hear in the Hog Rider's voice, poor writer. Thanks, Monty. Dude, I was so excited for the Devarian Boars, man. Boar's head. Boar. Don't say that. I actually want a sandwich now. Fuck. Boar's head. Damn it. Yep. I want to, Callum, I thank you for the bit. Note, now. a beaver tail is a fried pastry, usually served with Nutella. Well, now I'm hungry. Haha, uh -huh, screw you. Boar's head. No, screw you, Zeno. Screw me. There's a fucking deli nearby. Fuck you. <laughs> I play my. No, there's a deli near me too. Fuck you. Oh Fuck you. God. Yeah, and it's over the morning. Deli. Fuck you. Ah, uh, we're back at it again at the Krispy Kreme. I see. Double but, fuck yes, you. Yes, we are. I, I, have a I, 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 I hope. I hope you guys are enjoying the session so far. Sorry to kind of hurry yeah. you guys through shopping and things like that because I was just like, give, give me, let's go on the road. Oh, no, happy. it's been a very heavy note session for me. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We are. We are. Knee, we are knees deep in Fightlandia, so don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, I like the lore. Uh, Ghost of Corporal Jenkins with 50 bits bagged milk is evil, and there is nothing that you can do to convince me otherwise. I don't want to convince you otherwise. I agree with you. Ellie, thank you for the 100 bits. As an Aussie, we do not claim Delvaria. Hulksternator, thank you for the 100 bits. I would like a carton of milk. Bag milk it is. No, no, no. Carton. Bag. Carton. Bag. bag. <laughs> I'm going to say this. There's a reason she wants specifically a bag of milk. Because you're Canadian. Yes. Sure. Killer Chansey with the 10 it's bits. It's okay, Monty. I know What's why. What's y'all's go-to deli order? It depends where I am and what meats they have. 
if they have like a really good roast beef sub, I'm going roast beef. But I also do really like turkey and ham and all that stuff. So it depends. I'm if also going to ask who's making it what they what they like. If they do it 24 hours, a bacon, egg, and cheese. If not, just a nice Ooh. bologna and a cheese on a, on a roll with some I salt. I had a real good ham and bacon sandwich. It was nice. Would have cracked that one open. I was uh, born in Los Angeles, so I don't go to delis. Uh, went to a deli in Los Angeles. What is wrong with you, Mark? Blackfoot Fair, thank you for the leaf bits. Does this work as a Nutella emote? Sure. I guess. Maybe. Are, do you have, like, better Twitch TV or something that you can see it? I... <laughs> I chalky? I, I see it now. I, uh, Pro Shop, thank you for the five Ant. bits. I've never heard of a bag of milk until I watched the Unexpectables campaign one. Again, Canada's weird. Ketchup chips are a thing because of them. Mega thank you for the bits. Everybody's, everybody's always on about ketchup chips when the real, like, banger Canadian chip is all the all dressed. dressed baby. All dressed is really good. I didn't like, get to try it when I was up there, so. Dude, when, when. They have uh, them here in L.A., dude. When I flew to L.A., I, there was a lady in the Canadian side of the airport, and she was buying ketchup chips. And I, I said, hey, ma'am, I don't want to, like, invade what you're doing, but get some all dressed chips, too. Like, don't just get ketchup, get all dressed. And she's like, what's all dressed? And I'm like, it's, it's, you can only get them in Canada and it's better than ketchup chips in my opinion. And she's like, oh, thank you. And she bought like two more bags of all dressed. Uh, for, see, obviously family, yeah. Honestly, the thing the I missed most from Canada is the poutine. Like I, the chips were fine, but the poutine was incredible. <sighs> yeah, the there was a, po there was a poutine place here in New York, but it got burnt down. Oh. Uh. If you, you want to get if you want to get really good poutine, you want to go to Quebec. Like Quebec's got some of the best poutine like in the world. I got mine in Edmonton, and it was uh, also probably delicious. quite good. But yeah, Quebec has got the, the big banger like poutine. Kaboom! Yeah, is everybody back? Are we still waiting on people? I Gaijin. I think Gaijin's still gone. Zan might yeah. also be gone too. I am here. Also, okay, it is fucking raining. Good. Yeah, now. Mark I Ward did warn you. Ward. Yeah, this Mark, guy by is the way. This... Oh. I'm just gonna Go say ahead. this guy's looking scary, so if my power goes out, that's why. You got it. Otho it's died. scary, but you're safe. Otho's dead. Never the lightning bolt just again. comes down and my favorite... <laughs> through the chest. <laughs> my favorite thing, it was like when I had that giant thunderstorm in my in my town, I sent a video to Mark and I said, "You, why did you scare them into my I, territory? I cannot believe you blamed me for <sighs> that, by the way. I was like, what? I'm like 2,000 miles away from you. It's not, not my fault. Monty, do what I do. Be like, hey, Mark, what's the weather tomorrow at my place? <laughs> See, that I'll gladly do. I will happily provide Morning. forecasts for my friends. Oh, I think Gaijin's back. Is yep, Gaijin sorry. back? That reminds me. Could I'm you back. say All absolutely right. nothing about my forecast? That'd be great. Uh, I got you, man. Connor, you're back. Appreciate you. Bosco's here. No. Gaijin, you're back. Mm -hmm. I am not here. Mark, you're good to go. I guess. Zan, are you good to go? Good to go. All right. And Zito, you're good to go? Yeah. All right. Let's get back into it. So, the following morning, you guys gain the benefits of a long rest. Woo! And it's a very Good. comfortable sleep. Very nice bed, very cozy, very lavish. Uh, however, at dawn's break, which, by the way, is very hard to tell in this town, uh, you all collect your things a little bleary-eyed and make your way to the edge of Ganjifa Strix, where you currently see mounting up what looks to be almost like a large multi-person saddle uh, you see Heather currently moving about her two boars, a massive male boar, which we have art of on screen, uh, as well as what appears to be a female boar uh, and a tiny little striped baby boar. Uh, how dish tiny is tiny considering these things are fucking dire sized? Uh, elephant size for the baby. The ba oh my god. The baby is an elephant size? <laughs> like it's a yeah. baby so, elephant. So small and cute. It's 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 very cute. It's inter it's interesting too because it doesn't have saddles on it. It specifically seems to be in charge of carrying the cargo. Mm -hmm. So anything heavy that you guys want to relinquish to it, you can. Uh there is also uh a another two boars, which seem to belong to this strange fur coat wearing man. Uh who I will refer to Bardish the uh, possum hunter specifically. Uh, oh. And you see, I'm sorry, Zito. Not the not the possums oh. as you know them. It's oh no, I'm, I'm aware. I'm. Oh, I know, I know. North American <laughs> possums like crack addicts. I know. Yeah. 
Uh, however, you see currently he is loading up uh, the gear and material of uh, several other people. Uh, you see what appears to be a Delvarian woman uh, who is just absolutely shredded. Um, this is like Lady Barbarian woman. Uh, she currently has two axes, like battle axes, crossed across her back. Uh, she is wearing like kind of a colorful, almost skirt drapery, but like it's interlaid with like you know armor. Uh, her body is cut with scars. She's also pregnant. Oh. Um, oh. And meekly next to her, helping kind of trying to help is the best way to put it. Uh, you see what appears to be a human man. Um, I'm just gonna say it. He looks like Milo Thatch from Atlantis with the twink dial twisted to ten. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I uh, thought Milo was twisted to 10. Uh, no, this guy's more twisted to 10. This guy's 20, uh, dude. Oh God. <laughs> the twinkiest. And it seems like they're together uh, as Excellent. a pair. Uh, you also see another boar, which appears to be loaded up with gear, uh, that has its own rider, which appears to be a single person, uh, which looks to be a, a person of a very pale complexion, uh, wearing clothes similar to you guys. Uh, and you also notice a group of what looks to be uh, four individuals, younger men. Uh, you see a Davarian human, an orc, uh, and two twin Davarian uh, people, a boy and a girl, hmm. uh, specifically loading up their boar. Uh, Heather kind of slides down her boar and she goes, all right, anything you want the baby to carry or are you good to go? Oh, the there is actually one thing I wanted to do, Heather, that, that could benefit all of us, if you, if you don't mind the time. Sure, yeah. Um, I, um, I actually have a unique connection with my patron god, and I wanted to agree to see if there would be any uh, roughness to the travel, if you'd give me the, the ten minutes to do it. Sure, yeah, go for it. All right, so, I shall cast Augury. The question shall be... Uh, will this particular journey be very dangerous? And then um, it was high rolls is yes, low rolls is no, and then the in between is the severity, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> middle is uh, somehow. Middle is a shrug. High means yeah. yes, low means no. Usually. Yeah. Uh, with the... Rather the shake them bones and throw minutes. them in my bowl. I will say this: it is within the next thirty minutes. Uh, I'll say it's. Yeah. I mean, we're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go. Uh, it it seems to be middle. You get a roll okay. of seven, so it's middle. Got it. Well, that's as much as to be expected. That is an interesting ritual, Master Bright Beaver. I don't think I've ever seen it before. Oh, really? It's actually quite common. Well, oh. at least I thought it was. You watch as Heather kind of taps her forehead and goes, That reminds me. Uh, huddle up, you lot. <clears throat> we huddle. Um... <laughs> Okay, come down there. <laughs> she kind of looks towards all you guys. Um, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It's not like a full huddle. You guys are just talking as a group. She goes, everyone else here who's on this journey kind of knows the whims and ways of this country, so I'm going to be real with you right now. Are any of you dedicated spellcasters, wizards, sorcerers, warlocks? <laughs> Bards? Uh, I, am a practicing, I am a practicing wizard. Okay. Uh... If you're a druid, or if you're like him with the holy magic, um, generally get a pass. But if you're a magic caster, don't be too shocked if people just straight up don't talk to you. Uh, Will duly noted. It's not Any... that they hate you. It's just a um, <clears throat> there's history. All right, listen. A long time ago, well, not really that long, a, a while back, it used to be that Delvarians would immediately respect and fear most spellcasters, and then some charlatan came in here and took advantage of it, so now the new habit is just to not engage at all. So, just don't Arcane take it the wrong casters. way. Arcane casters, yeah. I see. I mean, there's practitioners of uh, war mages, or not war mages, oh my god, war clerics, my breath, that was my bad, she didn't say that, I did. Um... Yeah, we got we got war clerics, and I mean we have druids, a lot of druids, especially at oasises, right? So it's you know it's a little more commonplace, but like most of the wizards we get, or sorcerers, mostly sorcerers we get, uh, usually come from the north, fleeing 
and they tend to uh, either be fleeing because they're evil or fleeing and have to make ends meet. That well, makes in, sense. Tr in truth, I was not expecting to find anyone kind upon our travels once we left Genjifa. She blinks twice at you and goes, Wow, okay. Let's mount up. Hmm, she'll remember this. <laughs> yeah, she'll she definitely is knocking that one in the banks. Is uh what's the seating arrangement like on this massive boar? You guys get a choice. You have two boars. Uh you have the male and the female. Baby baby's got all the gear on it. Uh each boar can hold four people. Hmm. So there can be three with with Heather, and then the rest have to ride on the female boar. I'm gonna say in a... East Gun wants to ride with Heather. Okay, Milo does as coming. well. Note down who's on who here. You want to rephrase Sport. that statement? East Gun. Who's on first? <laughs> What's on Milo. second? I don't know. Right, who's on third. Have, we have two more spots, or one more spot for Heather, and then we have the female boar. Uh, Heather insists that the female boar will follow the male boar and will require very little, like, actual control. She says they're pretty smart. Ergal will go to the, the, the kitty table and go <laughs> sit on the female boar. <laughs> I guess I'm there too. All right. Oh my Please. god, we're splitting the brothers. <laughs> you... Uh, unless you want me, unless you absolutely want me to not split the brothers and I go on the male. Brother! I will not split the brothers, then. Put me on the mail. <laughs> Do what right. you want. All right, I won't. All right, that means Heather's group is full. Well, there we go. Which means the rest are going to go. So Kai and Otho. You stuck right. with the bird. Woo. As the rest of the caravan begins to load up, eventually like, there's a lot of waiting <laughs> around as the final like bits are kind of like <laughs> lodged in. You do witness a fun, funny interaction between the Delvarian woman and uh, the very twiggy man where he tries to, like, help her up onto the boar. And it's just like, it's just, a, it's it's not helping at all. Just, <laughs> She's just fine. Cane, just the cane one leg over the top rope. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> However, with that, the boar rises to their full height. It is terrifying being on the back of this thing. Also, you can easily side saddle this thing as well. Like, there's enough like space on the saddle that you can actually kind of move around comfortably if you need to. Each saddle is equipped as well with what I will uh, refer to as the holy shit handlebar, which essentially is just a <laughs> oh the old shit bar, yeah the, the old shit bar. I love those. And there's also like divots <clears throat> where you can put your feet. Uh, but as you raise the full height, it is staggeringly tall. It's terrifying. Sick. Um, Sorry, but immediately. I don't mean to break the flow too much. I just wanted to say, is anybody else hearing music? Because I am not. No. No, I, I turned know. it off. Okay. 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 Just okay. wanted to make sure. Don't worry. Uh, as everyone kind of rolls around, you watch as Heather kind of gives a nod to Bardish, and Bardish, under his just blanket of furs, just nods back to her, and she immediately lets out a sharp whistle, brings down her goggles, and... That rolls a natural one. You expected these things to be slow and lumbering, like a gentle walk. No, they run really fast. The size of this creature has no bearing on its speed, as most of you are almost launched off of your saddles as this thing goes into a fast-paced run. It is shocking how fast you go as they trumble, like, almost trudge ahead, like, faster than a galloping horse levels of speed. The moment, like, this happens, Heather was actually looking back and watching all of you and kind of giving a little, like, smile, like, yeah, I want to... It's like watching someone go on a roller coaster for the first time. <laughs> but you all managed to kind of get back into position and feel the flow of the movement as immediately you set off to the east. So how long have you had Humphrey? I've had him about ten years! Got him from my dad! How long do they usually live? Oh, man, like 20, 30 years? I've been breeding them for ever since I got Humphrey. I bought his, uh, his girlfriend there about five years back, and the baby is from this year. That baby's one high... year old? Yep. They must be in high demand. 
Uh, they tend to be. I mean, the, the males are good for riding and the females are good for eating. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yuskun just goes wide-eyed. At she, This is twice now she's just brazenly spoken about eating pigs in front of Humphrey, and he's just like, is that okay? I don't is think he, that's okay. He doesn't care. He doesn't understand us. <laughs> he might partake of the pig, too. Who knows? He's hungry. I yeah. can spell cannibalism. Hmm. He's a hungry, hungry hippo. So, uh, eating what happens when you're thrown out of Ark Osteria? What makes you say we'll be thrown out? I mean, no offense, but you're kind of idiots, you know, in a cute way. I cast fireball at level five. Fuck you. <laughs> let's just <laughs> let's just say fuck we're not in a you position. Fuck you and the pig you rode in on. We're not in a position where failure would benefit us. Oh, okay. I like it. A quest with consequences. That's interesting. Well, I'll probably have to make doubly sure that we get you there. Just don't get sick, all right? <laughs> that is the idea. Or we get, get sick of. Speaking of which, aside from the Ripjaw clan, do we have any bandits to speak of on this uh, trip? Bandits? God, no. No way, they wouldn't survive out here. Wow. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about how if we have people running around trying to deal with every little problem, but I don't think you understand the scale of the problem we have to deal with on a daily basis. I, I hear about- we're starting to get the idea. Oh, you'll get it, all right. Oh, that reminds me. Any of you got good eyes? Uh, yeah. All right. Goggles, I have a. I need a favor from you as we're traveling. Uh, it's Eastgan, actually, but uh, sure. Eastgan, all right. Uh, if you notice a pile of bones and then it suddenly isn't there anymore, you need to let me know right away, okay? Will do. What does that mean? It means that the stuff below the ground is a lot more dangerous than the things above it. Oh God. You're talking <laughs> about the undead. Fuck this. No, fam. Oh, worms. no. Let's no, go. we're talking no. sand worms. Dude, dude you put a thresher maw on this place, Monty. What the fuck? <laughs> I'll tell you what's the here. Spice. The spice. The boar are very fast, by the way. I hope so. Also, it's worth noting, there is no road. I was going to comment yeah. on that, actually. God, I hope they know where they're going. <laughs> Eastgun is... is like doing his best to like remember anything that in is some kind of uh, like a natural formation or something that stands out. Are there any particular carvings or uh, valleys Maybe. that have a, a definite shape that he can remember to add to the map later? There Maybe are like flags sticking out of sticks uh, in the <laughs> God, sand, no. so we don't get lost in the Gerudo Desert. And wait a minute. There are there are rock formations, but you know you're like, okay, that that's a unique looking rock formation. But then you move like you know another hour of travel, and you see one that's very similar, and you're like, shit, and like kind of have to like figure out a unique thing. And unfortunately, you just don't see anything. However, you get the sense that Heather and Barbish don't really have like. They just seem to know where they're going, and you're like, how on earth do you know where you're going? How exactly do you navigate out here? What? I said, how do you get around out here? On the floor! No, I mean, how Fucking do you know where God. you're going? Oh! Well, the land is ever-shifting and changing. Any efforts to make roads is immediately destroyed, so... Hey, just like the opposite. You know what doesn't work down? You gotta look up. Look up oh. at what? I'll show you when we make camp tonight. Uh, okay. And he'll go back to keeping an eye out for bones. Interestingly enough, as you travel, you don't stop for water because there's none. <laughs> you don't see a single drop of water in your entire day-long journey. I can have water. I like the idea of trying to cast create water, but by the time it forms, we're like 50 meters it's... down the road. I, I imagine it just evaporate in the air. To try to make it... <laughs> it becomes create steam. 
uh, create the essence of water. How blisteringly hot is it out here, Monty? It's pretty reasonable right now. It seems oh, to be okay. like patchy clouds, so it's not bad. The mm. dust is really bad, though. Mm. Like, you're lucky, like, you guys are in the front because holy crap, is it dusty. Like, every single gallop of these boar just kicks up just an absolute cloud of, like, sand and dust. Like, as you look behind you, it's just like a trail behind you that sticks to the air and makes its own swirling clouds. God, I hope we are didn't we... lose anyone on the clouds. Are, are uh, we kind of, like, spread out in sort of like a V formation, or are they directly behind us? Uh, it seems to be kind of like a slight off direction. Like, it's almost like almost like a slant, not really a V formation, but a slant. Right. Okay. So you all can be with an eye shot, more or less. Um, currently, it's you guys in the lead. The the sow is following behind uh, Humphrey, who's the, the male boar. The baby is, like, right next to mama. It's, like, right next to the mama yeah. boar. Uh, and then behind that is the two boars belonging to Bardish. The Delvarian woman and, like, the, the thin man are on that one. And then the, the rest of the group are on a second one behind that. And then making up the caboose is the merchant, whose boar is covered in, like, boxes and crates and other bags and things. And they seem to be keeping up pretty well. However, as the sun begins to dip, uh, you hear a loud, sharp kind of multitude of whistles come out from Heather, and you watch as the boars begin to slowly come to a stop. They've been running the entire day, not Jeez, stopping sorry. once, and then slowly come to a stop. And the moment the motion stops, all of you feel kind of unwell. Like, I don't care how good your constitution is. Huh. Like, the moment things stop, you're like, oh, wow. Like, we were, it was jostling the moment you're hit by the stillness. Jeez. I feel it tingly all, right. all over in an unpleasant way. Uh, feels uh, sick. She says as she lifts up her goggles and looks back to you. This bitch. I, uh, I might just need a minute. <laughs> no worries, take your time. Just kind of slump and roll off the side. I, and I, I was about to say, fall. guys, like, stands up. It's okay, I just need a... And they're just, like, fucking, like... Jack Sparrow falls down a staircase, like, style off the bar. You notice that you've actually stopped uh, near what appears to be, like, a small, like, I don't want to say forest, because that's really generous, but, like, a like a like what it appears to be some sort of, like, gathering of trees, like these really hardy-looking brush trees and shrubs. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. A shrub field? More or less, yeah. It's, it's actually quite dense, but it's, like, it, you know, it's not a forest. It doesn't have, like, leafs or anything like that but as you dismount immediately uh bardish the hunter guy kind of immediately just takes off like just drops off of his boar and just walks away into the shrubland as uh as heather kind of begins to take off some of the stuff off the boar and kind of let them just graze like not even like tying them anywhere she just lets them loose hmm she kind of stretches her back the rest of the traveling companions also dismount uh, and begin to kind of take some things off and set up tents as the sun slowly begins to dip past the horizon. You watch Once. as uh, the young right. men begin to gather like what appears to be like like rock slabs um, and is kind of like counting through. And you notice that these rocks actually appear to be like black, but they're not black rocks. They've been scorched. Ooh. After, Heather kind of, uh, Heather kind of looks. Yeah, go ahead, go for it. I was just gonna say, after a few minutes of getting his land legs back, uh, Eskin will start pulling out uh, everybody's tents to get to start helping get those set up. <clears throat> Is there a solid place in which we can do that? Yeah, there's ground. You can okay. you can pin it to the ground. It's not sand. Like this is not like a desert desert. This is like oh, an arid okay. landscape. Yeah. Uh, so this, this uh, is like land. I was about to say it's, this it's, is it's like a... Eastern Australia. This I was going to say yeah. imagine Western, imagine Mexico, Australia, and Nevada had a baby and it is what the landscape is like here. Oh, it's so dry. Right. It's, so it's, dry. Dry. it's like a cracked earth. <laughs> it's not the Gobi desert, but it is a desert. Yeah. Uh, as the tents are being made, you, you notice the boar actually kind of begin to just, like, dig up the ground. Like, begin to shuffle through the ground. Oh my god, he's going for truffles. You think, you, you were like, oh, truffles! And you watch as it actually bites into something, and just, like, 
rips up like a root that is probably as large as a man and just like Ooh. chomps down on it. And you watch as it chomps down, like water gushes from it as it begins uh. to eat it. Heather. Oh, oh sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, Heather, what's your bar picking up? Water root. That's a thing? Yeah. I mean, these trees can't survive above ground, so most of their systems are below ground. Huh. I've heard that I've heard that cacti can retain water, but What's a what's a cacti? It's a plant that grows in the desert. It it's green and spiky. Sometimes huh. they have little fruits on top of them. We have plants that are like that, but not like like in the well, oasis, they have stuff like that, like thorny things with flowers and fruits. Oh, that's probably it. Oh, is there cactus. is there any kind of way, like a telltale sign, that there's a water root around? No, only they know. That's it's like wild. Like built in like truffles. Man. What's what's a truffle? They're a uh, sort of fungus that uh, is quite uh, quite delicious when grated over certain foods. It's highly coveted. <laughs> yeah, he's got the right of it. You hear the Twiggy guy kind of, like, point a finger up and kind of jump in, and then awkwardly go back to, like, helping his wife set up a tent. Hmm. It's, uh... He just stares for a moment, bewildered. <laughs> expensive delicacy in many places, mostly places with forests. But, yes, uh... and... The, uh... smaller varietals boars will dig them up and eat them because they find them delicious as well. Huh. Interesting. I knew you'd have some weird stories. Oh, oh that is far those. from the weirdest story that we have to offer. Hey, you guys got your shields? She yells out to the kind of younger Delvarian guys and they actually kind of walk over. And you notice that they do have like these really tall metal shields. Almost like diamond shaped but rounded. And they kind of bring them over, and she kind of looks at it like, okay, cool. Like, kind of looking it over. And she stops and looks towards you, Milo, and goes, all right, you want to cook. That's right, I was about to ask. Okay, well, uh, I don't know how you cook, wherever you're from, but, um, you know, we don't exactly have wood, so. Were you about to use the shields? Yeah. Well, we'll see what uh, Bardish gets. If you get something, then I'm let 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 us cook tonight. You know, try some authentic Delvarian cuisine. He 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 jokingly side eyes her. All right, but next time you're trying my cuisine. I mean, if you cook like the Hearthlands, then uh, you might not be able to get away with what you think you can here. He will, take that, that... As a he will take that as a personal challenge. Hmm. I will vouch for Mr. Brightbeam's culinary expertise. Gaius, as you're setting up the tents with these can, you hear in the distant trees just some swearing and like a horrible like animal noise is the best way to describe it. Oh geez. Uh did anyone else hear that or was it just me? You heard it. It sounded like 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 a rat screaming, but like lower pitched. Uh is anyone, is anyone nearby me? Yeah, your companions are. Did any of you all just hear an animal screech? It was over this way. I, like, kind of, like, mosey myself towards it, but not, like, you know, in a way mm -hmm. that, like, I'll go ahead first and everything. As you mosey your way, you hear rustling in the foliage, and then soon see emerging in his tapestry of furs, uh, Bardish, currently holding what appears to be a probably four-foot-long like it almost looks like like i said like a possum meets like a rat meets like a squirrel combo and it is what? currently dead and bleeding out and you see it's got an arrow stuck to it and he is just like just throttling it like holding it by the throat and bringing it into camp what kind of creature is that he stops and looks and he goes it is a kiburu what i suppose you hunt them for singly for food, but no. I suppose that's also what your fur is? No. These are vile creatures. They carry disease with them. I kill them as revenge. Oh, plague bearers, then. 
He nails it to a tree and just begins to gut it. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Wow. All right, well. <laughs> like, I... I... Does this mean, I, I look over, like, to anyone else. Is anyone else finding this a little, like, disturbing outside of the fact that, like, does this feel like a fucking personal vendetta? Milo's already walked, like, tiptoeing backwards, not, you know, keeping face of this guy. The, uh, the twig man is, like, uh, kind of gets nervous, but then, like, the Delvarian woman just puts a very heavy hand on his shoulder, and he immediately is, like, stops where he is. The merchant kind of raises a brow and then just kind of looks away like that is not my problem and is just reading a book. So Reverse this is outsider. just a this does feel like a personal vendetta then that it does a common thing. Hmm. If you catch Eskan's expression, he just kind of looks at you and shrugs and goes back to finishing up with the tents. Uh I'm not going to shy away from this. Gaius is going to like lean in as if to study what he's doing. It is beautiful in a weird kind of way. Uh, as this man, like, butterflies this creature, it very swiftly and quickly just cuts out the organs, tosses them, you know, takes off the fur in, like, almost one single, like, there's no nicks or cut, it's just the full thing immediately. The thing, though, that he kind of notices you watching him, and he actually, like, tosses the fur towards you and goes... Between the arms, give it a smell. Gaia shrugs and does so. Roll me a constitution saving throw. Nice. <laughs> and dead. Immediately. Man. Just fall over family guy fall. 18. 18. It's pungent, whatever it is. It almost smells like coffee grinds that have been sitting out like for way too long oh, yeah. and have cultivated into like some sort of mold. It's very uh, foul-smelling, for sure. Well, well, it obviously affected Gaius, but at the same time, he, like, shows that, like, it wasn't, like, you know... He doesn't, re like, revolt or get, like, shy away from it. He's just, like, is that some sort of defense mechanism? Most animals here, if they're not big and they're not strong and they're not armored, use other means to defend themselves, he says, as he begins to cut in that space, and he kind of tosses what looks to be, like, a thick piece of skin. Glands... They spoil the meat too if you don't take them out. But there's an artistry to this. Artistry? I don't know about that. There's a skill, I suppose. Another way to say crafts, I suppose. We slow the cook it. Oh. Hmm. And oh, I suppose oh, oh, we use the gland. Oh yeah, by all means. But also these glands you talk about. Is there a way we could act? Is there a way that I could actually be used? Not that I know of. In my twenty years of hunting these fuckers down, no. I just toss them. Hmm. A thought comes to mind, though. I'm not sure if this would be interesting to you, but what if you used it as some sort of bomb or some sort of like concoction to throw at things to keep them away? If you want to do that, be my guest. They're covered in sand, but they're still in the dirt if you want them. I'm interested in the fur and the meat and the fact that this fucker is dead. He says he just jam like unnails it from the from the thing and just tosses it. Guys just shrugs. He's not gonna heaven. he's not gonna fucking he's not gonna like poo-poo this man in his craft. So I'm gonna try a survival check to see if I grab that. Sure, you wanna grab the gland? Yeah. Okay. You don't need to roll anything for it. You just pick it up. It's got some dirt on it, and it's like it feels like weirdly squishy, like there's something inside, but it's like lumpy. It's weird. All right, cool. Because if I, I acted will say, correctly, you may want to put that in a sealed container, my guy. I have I have a jar. <laughs> you got it. All right, go ahead and add uh, Kibaru gland to your inventory. Cool. Gross. Hey, yo, yo, you say gross? This might not only. I don't know, like, this could not also be, like, a sellable object we could give to someone. Milo. Be the most yes. Valuable you thing. watch as they take these two shields that uh, two of the men are carrying. Mm -hmm. uh, and you watch as they place one down, and they begin to cut up what appears to be, like, you know, keepable vegetables. Something that wouldn't go bad in the sun. Like, so there's some onions, some other kind of root vegetables that they throw in. Mm -hmm. And just a ton of spices as they also toss in the completely, like, prepared carcass of this creature. It looks 
very unnerving, but uh, trusted, I guess. Um, and you watch as they begin to collect firewood, but they're very particular. You notice that they don't just pick up what's obvious. They seem to go through and, like, really look out for specific things. Mm. Uh, and then they gather up the rocks, and you're like, oh, they're gonna make, like, a circle and then put the fire in the middle. No. They build the fire on top of the rocks, actually. Mm. And you watch in just careful preparation, they, uh, while this is happening, while the fire is going, they begin to dig a hole in the ground. Hmm. And you watch as after a while passes, like a couple hours pass, and at this point it is nighttime. You watch as they take these really hot rocks and throw them at the bottom of the hole and then place the shield and the other shield on top like a lid and actually like tie it shut hmm. and then place it into the hole take all of the embers of the fire and throw it on top and then just cover the thing with dirt immediately so just for clarification's sake they, they heat up the rocks, put it in a hole, put the shields over the hole? They put the shields in the hole. So they basically oh, dig a big hole. hole. They they make the bottom of the hole, they make it out of hot rocks, place the shield in with the top on top, like, like a lid top. Mm -hmm. And then they cover that with the embers of the fire that they just burnt, and then they cover the whole thing up with dirt. That's like a geothermic uh, oven. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And Heather kind of looks towards you, Milo, because you're. I'm assuming you're watching this process. Of course, I want to. I want to. I want to learn to cook like this. Yeah, Heather kind of looks at you and goes, "I hear that in your foreign nations, you have a king's bounty of wood that you can just burn for fun. We are not so lucky here." Mm hmm. He, he just kind of frowns at that. G Gaia shakes his head. If you were to start a fire like that where I was from, the whole place could probably light up in a blaze. <laughs> ah, love to see it. Apparently trees that are as thick as a man is. And boughs with green leaves. Huh. How much reverence is she putting into that? She seems to be thinking about it pretty hard, yeah. Hmm. You watch as she sits down, and you see the Delvarian woman, who at this point hasn't really talked, go, You can see them plenty at Oasis's. Don't dream too hard. At this point, everyone seems to be kind of sitting down just to kind of spend some time together. Hmm. Well, not necessarily. I mean, I'm sorry if this seems bragging, but you are correct in that statement. While there are trees where I come from that are as big, you. if not... Hey! Go, boy. Don't do that. What? No sorries. You have nothing to be sorry for. Eh, fair enough. Guy don't shrugs. Waste... She points an accusatory finger at you and goes, Don't waste a sorry for nothing, or else it doesn't mean anything when it does matter. Very well, then. Where I'm from, the trees not only could be the size of a person, but probably the size of a whole building. Probably as tall as like four of them stacked together my goodness milo scoots a little bit closer to heather and pulls out the royal cookbook oh if you're curious about what we actually have and what we eat uh, i've got a perfect book right here if you'd like to look through it she looks at it and she goes uh i don't she kind of looks at everybody else, and some of them kind of look confused. The other man, the, the thin, skinny man, is like, oh, yes, a book. And the merchant is reading a book currently, and she kind of looks towards you and goes, that's really kind of you, but um, I don't read. Well, I mean, I could read it for you. I guess, yeah, sure, if you want to. I mean... Sure. Basically, if there's any... If there's anything she's ever, like, heard tales of, but not sure if... if was actually real or something like that, he would try to cross-reference it and find the ingredients and how to make it and all that jazz. The thing that stuns you the most is how little she knows of the ingredients that are listed. Like, mm. almost everything. She's like, what's a tomato? What's a lettuce? What is that? Oh, I would just go ham in the explanations. 
she seems interested, but a bit indifferent, but she's mm -hmm. engaging you. Uh, the skinny man kind of turns towards you, Otho, and goes, uh, 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 Oh, uh, uh, my, my name is Lenford. Ah, Otho. Nice to meet you, Otho. Uh, it's not too often I see people who aren't from Delvaria or Ganjifa, to be honest. <laughs> Indeed, what brings you out this way? It seems you've uh, got quite the... Uh, uh, situation. He kind of looks towards the... You assume his wife, you're not sure. And she kind of gives you a, like a bit of a glance that kind of pierces through you a little bit as she's like sipping <laughs> on what looks to be tea. And he kind of smiles and goes, oh yeah, the baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, <laughs> you know, how things go when you meet a woman you really like and things happen. I am but we're excited. how it works. Yeah, we're actually uh, heading, uh, I think the same place you guys are heading. Uh, we're heading to Ar Um uh, Oh, this is my, my wife. Uh, this uh, Acrofena, that's her name. <laughs> uh, Lovely to meet you, madam. Mm. Well, she kind of looks fine. down and like just drinks her tea, little not engaged. Yeah, she's a little mm. prickly, but she's really sweet once you get once you get to know her. Really, truly. I'll um, take your word for it. I'm uh, I'm from Elmer. Uh, where are you from? Motorello. Oh, that's far from here. I, uh, mm. Isn't that that's like a whole country and a half away? We do some trading with uh, Ganjifa every once in a while. Oh, I see. That makes sense. I, I, I was a trader once, too. Uh, kind of. I, I, I was a cobbler, but now more of a leather worker <laughs> now. But uh, I'm pretty good at it. And, I mean, I got plenty of material here, right? I should see some of the creatures they pull in. Stuff I just can't even imagine. Hmm. And you said you were going to the capital... Are you going there for the Grand Hunt? Oh, gosh, no, no. Uh, uh, Akrafena uh, is expecting, and uh, she's got family there, so we're uh, hoping to go there just, you know, for help. Not, not that there's any problem or anything, but uh, it seems that child-rearing is a big affair and requires a lot of participants compared to Elmer, so, you know. Merge it with seems the culture. Like seems like it's quite the journey in comparison to other places. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be, I don't know how long until we see another town, if we even see another town. It all depends on whether or not the town is still there. <laughs> uh, I laugh because it's scary, honestly. Um, Sounds but, exciting. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's never a dull moment here. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, your merchants then? Of a sort. Huh. Ah. Uh, We've bring a whole lot with you. I mean, not that to judge or anything like that. I mean, I can understand, but uh... we've got missives that need to get to certain people in the capital. Missives in the capital. That's uh, huh? Is that do that? And he kind of turns towards his wife, and his wife goes, "Not usually." And she drinks her tea, kind of, you know, she seems very guarded. He goes, "Well, I uh, hope it goes good." As... Yes. Uh, we've I don't noticed know. that the missives don't n normally make it to the capital. That's why we're here hand-delivering it. That makes sense, yeah. Most uh, courier animals don't tend to survive out here, from what I've heard. So it makes it kind of difficult. I mean, I, last letter I sent to my family was me basically explaining, like, hey, don't send a hawk, it's just going to die. You know, I'll, I'll message you when I can. So, you know. Oh. Be that as it may, if our mission is a uh, success or not, this whole concept of this festival and hell, the culture itself is all the more interesting for me. I know it will be a benefit and a boon for anything we do here to, for me to learn. You hear a chuckle from one of the young Delvarian men, kind of a scarred up Delvarian, not too dissimilar to one of the guard, like the guards you met in Martorallo that one time. He kind of chuckles under his breath and goes, I, 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 mean, I turned to him. I mean, if you're interested in a participation award, I'm sure you'll get that. Oh, I think I'll manage. I pop Giant's Might. He watches, he, um. like, stops and kind of looks up. And you notice them kind of look up, and they actually don't seem all that shocked, actually, as you do that. All right, Skilt Grabber. I get the point. Still, you're going to need more than that if you want to succeed. Well, that's why I'm here to learn. I shrink back down. Kind of nice to see someone not actually be all shocked about that whole little, you know, thing I can do. 
It's puzzling, though, he says as he kind of leans forward. Most of the people who can do that sort of thing come from east of the capital, not from the west. Well, I'm neither. Huh. That's interesting. You said east of the capital? Yeah, he said east of the capital. Most people who can do that sort of thing are from east of the capital, not the hmm. west. Well, can you tell me of those who actually can do that ability? Oh, the reclamators of the fire giant fortress? Guys holds up his book. Skilt vesting is what they call it. A place carved into the stone rock. Once belonged to the ancient fire giants. The very fire giants Delvaria slain many thousands of years ago. Scribbling all that down. Skilt vesting? Did you get that right? Vesting. Skilt oh. vesting. Skilt vesting. Uh. Which, uh, Gaius literally yep. means rune fortress, is what it's called. Ooh. I love that game. <laughs> no, that's runescape. Well, I. Well, that actually sounds all the more interesting, more for me. I'm. He like. He like turn he, he like just shrugs because the the stones are just like there on his back it's on the spikes so he just like turns to show and points at it and there are two runes sitting in the uh little spikes where the divots are in the stone and it shows the uh the fight uh fight and storm this was more of a shock to me this is some sort of birthright that i've never known and it only just happened recently huh that's not a birthright. You trained to get that. Hmm. Oh. At least the way that we've known it. You imbue yourself with the ancient might of the fire giants long since past. <clears throat> Guys kind of like looks at his hands and his arms. He's like, I've, I've only ever learned the language. That was only because of my father and my mother, but I never figured sculpting it to flesh or even stone that forms from the skin would even be a factor in my life. That's a skilt grabber. A rune knight is what we call them here. Huh. You become it. One with the giants. Whoever trained you probably just didn't tell you. Don't know why they wouldn't do that, but who knows? Family's a mysterious thing. You can do that. They trained you well, and you definitely have the blood of giants within you. But not through the way you think. Not through bloodline, but through technique. I'll have to thank my uncle and my father then when I see them again. Hmm. Guys, like, like bows his head to them, just, like, thanking them. Just, like, thank you. They give you kind of a nod back as well. Anyway, not to demean your accomplishments or anything, but looking at your present company, I would probably recommend not participating in the Grand Hunt. Why not? I mean... <laughs> Just 180. <laughs> I guess you could do it for fun as tourists, but if you want to actually win, I mean, let's be honest. Well, of course, even if I lose, it's still a competition. Failure is part of the journey of learning. You watch as the orc next to him goes... He's right, you know. He's like, shut up, Adden. <laughs> oh, I see. like Adden. Still, it may be worth a try if meeting the royals is the prize. <laughs> Why you want to meet the royals? Wouldn't anyone want to meet royals? I guess they I should be more specific. Why does a Hearthland soldier want to meet the royals? And he turns his eyes and immediately hits you, Stragal. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Stragal's been really quiet, just kind of in the background, kind of looking into his bag this whole time. Uh, uh, I'm not a Earthland soldier, and, you know, no need to worry about that. You carry yourself like a Earthland soldier. You stand like one. You favor your right arm because you use a pole arm. You're carrying a fucking pole arm with you. Do you think we're stupid? No. In fact, I think you're very perceptive. But understand that I am not here to fight a war nor do I answer to any form of general or commander, so therefore, not a soldier. Oh, that's a shame. I thought things would be interesting. You'll have to look somewhere else, then. 
Even so, is this not a time of peace? I mean, yeah. But just because things are peaceful doesn't mean doesn't mean fighting can't happen. You know, for fun. That is something I have sought. Fighting for always... fun. I I fighting for sport. It's a great sport. At, at least my cousins deemed it so. Delario would love you. In regard to the war, he sits kind of sits down and kind of jostles. I'm a bit annoyed, honestly. But I'd love to fight your people more. They're interesting to fight, really. And, and I don't mean this candidly or boastfully. We both know we would have won anyway. You're all just going to take a moment and take a sip of some form of rum and simply just walk away from the camp for a moment. Kai's going to go follow him. Uh, and as he walks over there, he's going to turn back to that individual and go you know you got a real big mouth you, you want to do something about it off. he stands up yeah I just might <sighs> alright then let's go I'll deal with you in a second there's somebody I actually care about and he's actually going to go find Stradal Gaius wants to turn to them well I understand that 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 was a tension. Uh, that was a bit of a tenuous situation. I know words might harm them in a way, considering all the things that are going on with this country between Hearthland and Delvaria. But if you wish to take aggression out, at least for a sparring factor, you can take it out on me instead of them. No, I want to fight him. If it matters, they'll fight. I, w I will defend their honor if need be. Then they are weak. No, they have their reasons. Then let's fight. And he swings up a battle axe. Interesting to note, no one seems shaken by this. Not even the guy from Altmer. He's like, okay, here we go. <laughs> like, everyone's just, just like, all right, cool fight. Does he really want to throw down? Yeah, he's like, let's go. Let's fight. As I said, but, I will defend their honor. I hold my great axe at the ready. He holds oh, his at the ready. It just, is Strigal still close enough to hear all that? I'm sorry, I thought I... Oh, thought yeah. I you turn around and you see them, like, squaring up. Strigal will kind of look towards Kai. I promised myself I wouldn't do this, but... We all make compromises, right? He hands you the bag. With your life, gonna... Master Vantilius. Wait, wait, what are you going to do? Lose, probably. But I need to do this. And he will I... take off his kind of top part of his robe and hand you the his bag that seems to have the griffin egg in it. With your life, Valentinius. Kai's going to take the bag. Strigal will simply take a few steps closer towards the Delvarian. I've heard a lot of words, mostly spread at my people. And I understand, yes, you very likely would have won the war. But you didn't. So if you want to put that to the test, your little theory, fine. But understand that if you do win, this changes nothing. Your people are landlocked here and need our help to continue to survive in this ever-changing world. Well, let's hope you can fight as good as you can talk. All right, so all ready as, uh, ready as Albert. All right. What is your best combat skill? Ooh, um, I mean, his- Fireball! He... Yeah, fireball! <laughs> fireball! <laughs> Fire laser he, does a, he does have a firebolt at plus six, but his uh, halberd is plus four, so not bad. Okay, halberd then. Uh, plus four this is going to be D d20 rolls plus your ability score improvement, just because we're not going to do a back and forth battle with him. It'll take Fair enough. forever. So it's going to be best of three. You two are in about. It is not to death or submission or dismemberment. That is the agreement, because you have a traveling to do. Yep. 
but he kind of kind of like a lion almost like prowling around a gate and everyone else is watching this too with the silent glow of the remaining embers of the fire and That's immediately true, but... the wind kind of tossles the trees and is quiet would Strigal know if he could use his magic or not or no oh magic here would be really disrespectful so no fair enough all right all right go ahead and roll for me the first d20 plus four <laughs> 18. Let's Ooh. go! You match. I shit you not. Oh, let's go! Total. As immediately, there's like a moment where one of the embers just shifts slightly, and both of you immediately out of Harris trigger, <gasps> clash your weapon, spark erupt, igniting the camp, and immediately you're locked, you're halberd into his battle axe, and you can see him kind of pressing harder. His pure might is quite impressive. But as you kind of push each other back and charge in for another strike, go ahead and roll for me another d20 because that didn't change anything. You're at a land, they're locked together. Uh oh. That's a seven. Seven. Okay. As you go to flourish, he kind of sweeps around and swings and kind of like knocks the weapon out of the way, almost putting you into an unfavorable position before he just headbutts you and you kind of crumple to the ground and then find yourself back up to your feet. Your head is swimming. Unfortunately, he takes a point from you. All right. You watch as he kind of like, there it is. That's it. Let's see it. Come on. No more words. Fighting. Fighting. Show me the language of our people. And he swings his sword and go ahead for his axe, rather. That's a natural one oh. for a five. Oh, no. Oh, boy. As he goes and swings, he almost, he actually like hits the shaft of your weapon and then notice it, sweeps it around and disarms you. As you are weaponless in front of him, and your halberd scatters to the wind, what do you got that you can use here? Uh, he'll pull out his dagger. All right. Do a dagger roll here. Kick his ass, Dragal. Six. Oh, oh, my. Six. oh, my God. He kind of rushes up to you, and you expect him to swing, but he doesn't. Instead, he kind of, like, walks up to you, almost backhands. He hits you in the wrist with his, he has, like, bracers on, and he hits you in the wrist, and it hurts so much that your dagger hits the ground. He punches you in the face, and you feel your world spinning, and he grabs you by the throat, and then throws you onto the ground, taking match point. Uh, uh, and there's... Hey, yeah? Uh above game if I was to take a round at this, would this take too long? I mean, you could. Uh, okay, cool. However, Continue, as Strigal hits the ground and lands, he extends a hand to you, Strigal. Ooh. Strigal will kind of swallow his pride and take the hand. He lifts you back up. This is the problem. You hearthlands let your emotions dictate your actions. Let go every once in a while. You might learn something. Try to keep that in mind. He gives you a couple pats on the shoulder. Not bad, though. And he, like, kind of scoops up your halberd with his foot and then kicks it up into the air for you to catch. Strigal will do so. Take a breath and walk back towards Kai. Before he walks away, he will see Gaius's great axe land in front of him, hanging midair. Gaius isn't looking at him. In front of Sergal or in front of this guy? Uh, in front of this guy. Okay. Like, like I'm just like barring his path forward by showing him the axe. I have no qualms. Oh, neither do I. Thought. I respect it. Oh, this is not for my friend's honor. Gaius throws the axe over his head off to the side and holds his arms up into a fucking fighting position. I want this. Work out before dinner. Let's go. All right, go for it. Fucking uh, fist. Fist time. Let's go. Are you going Are you going fist or are you going weapon for these rolls? No, I'm going fucking bare hands. I want this guy to be as honorable as possible with okay, it. Okay, he's he'll ditch his, his, his axe as well. He's going to go bare hands. Just for the sake of this, obviously, it's just going to be d20 rolls, so no grapple or anything like that. So just of course. But yeah. is it, like, plus six because of my thing, or...? Yeah, you get plus six, and he definitely doesn't have as good as a modifier with his unarmed, so... You're Fuck yeah. All right. Let's go. You rolled really well, though. 
22 both ways. Not good enough. As you immediately, like, as he's kind of like, let's do it. You just immediately go for a haymaker and just hit him in the side of the head and he almost topples over. And then kind of wipes his nose and goes, I'm starting to like foreigners a little bit better now. All right, let's go. And you guys ring up again. Ooh, very good. 18. You guys tie again. That's another tie with 18. That, I that was a ram, so that's a headbutt with his fist. As you go for a ram, he actually catches your horns and almost goes for like a quasi-German suplex backwards, but oh, you manage shit. to land on your feet, basically like stopping his throw attack. Guy is going to Worthful suplex city. My ass out of the way. Let's go. Here we go again. Yeah. Get his ass. 20. 20. Not Did natural. Him? He got another 18. You actually reverse on him and like actually whip him around so he slams onto his back on the ground before you rip your horns three free. Sand kicks up into the air and some of the boars actually kind of look up while chewing. Oh, Last fuck. bout potentially. Let's see what happens. Oh bad. Twelve both ways. He rolled a natural one. Oh my god. Kick his ass. You, as he kind of scrambles up back to your feet, before he can get up, you knee him in the stomach and then just barrage him with a series of punches before he crashes back and he goes, I yield! I yield! Ah. Is he holding his hand up when he says that? Yeah, he's holding up his hand when he Gaius says that. Gaius grabs him by the forearm and pulls him back up to his feet. Ah. Oh, you hear, like, a popping of bone as he, like, re- like, it seems like his arm was a little detached and he just kind of pops it back into places, like, oh. ah! Now, if we went yep. to war with you, we might have had more trouble. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this has proven my mettle to you. Yeah, I already knew you were able to do it. Aw, oh, shucks. <laughs> this guy is just like, aw. Oh. oh, this is what I've been missing. I haven't done something like this since I've last seen my cousins year a year ago. <laughs> hey, he kind of calls out to you, Strigal. No hard feelings, right? I would not let my emotions get the better of me. Not on this day. Not in life, either. I think the food's ready. Adam, get the shovel. You watch, he's like, well, I'm drinking tea. Okay. <laughs> he watches, he sets the tea. <laughs> okay. You okay. guys are treated to a feast. It's weird. It's like, what if... Rabbit... And beef were combined into a pulled pork-like consistency. Rabbit beef. beef. Yeah! <laughs> God, you yeah! Beef <laughs> yeah! 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 As the food One is served, down. it is like fall off the bone tender with spices and almost like a fragrance to it. It is delicious. It's like slow cooked pulled pork beef rabbit is the best way to to put it. Man. They they even drizzle on some like kind of spicy tangy kind of oil from like a vial just to add a little kick of flavor. And people just dig in. They just eat mm. the whole thing. I gotta have like, a certain ramen place now after you said that. God I'm damn sorry. it. I particularly like the almost fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> the uh pregnant Dovarian woman kind of goes I hope it's up to your lofty standards rich boy <laughs> it will definitely suffice for dinner you watch as uh Bardish the possum hunter guy he actually hands uh her a specific piece of meat like almost like immediately it's like this is for you uh, and you notice it appears to be like a small liver, like a tiny cooked liver that she just immediately just chews and swallows instantly. And Heather kind of, uh, kind of stops and looks towards you, Eskan, and goes, Oh, I owe you something. Huh? You want to know how we navigate? Oh, uh, yeah. Come here. He'll, is she like motioning him away from everybody or? Yeah, kind of off to the side. Okay. Yeah, he'll follow after. All right. There. And you watch as she raises her hand and almost takes her, uh, you know, the only hand she has, 
uh, and lifts it up and makes an L shape into the sky, and then she kind of closes one of her eyes. She goes, a little farther south today, but by tomorrow, if we just head a little bit more north, we'll probably hit a village, I think. Are you see you, it? Are you navigating by the stars? Yeah. That's the Arrow's Crest formation. It always Eastern? rises to the east. You said the Arrow's Crest? The arrow's crest is what she calls it, yeah. Rises to the east. Mm -hmm. So um, you can see, based off of this, we're a little off course, because that's slightly more north than it should be, based on where we are right now. So you use that formation as sort of like a compass? Yeah. And if we're off, we use it and we compare it to this one right here, this constellation. Iskan's going to pull out uh, what has become his sort of star map book and flip to a new page and start charting these stars here, uh, giving know. particular note to that formation. I don't know what you call it, but we call it Illinois Spoon. It basically helps us determine, like, kind of north. It's more northeast-ish, so we can kind of use that when we're using the Arrow's Crest formation. You can easily get the Arrow's Crest if you make an L shape in the sky. If you line it up, you can figure it out. He'll kind of mimic her motion and close one eye and try and see it. Yeah. No, no, a little more up like this, and she kind of helps you out. Okay. So the spoon is always north of the crest? No, 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 northeast. North, northeast, okay. Northeast, yeah. So it's not, you can't really rely on it because it's not exactly like you might go more east, you might go more north, but if you're using it, if you're comparing it to the arrow's crest it helps just to kind of you know make sure you know you're you are if that makes sense and then you use that as a reference do you always look at the same time of night uh not usually i mostly just try and keep an eye on when it rises because it's the most clear but okay. it's pretty consistent and what do you do if it's cloudy i guess really and then we reconstitute ourselves once we make rest it's not exactly good to stand still here. Yeah, I could see why. Hey, you know what? She kind of clasps the hand on your shoulder. I'll show you how we do that tomorrow. Yeah, that that would be great. Thanks. Of course. I like you guys already. This is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, if we all live. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, is, yeah. I'm sure we'll be fine. I mean, uh, we're not exactly useless. Well, I hope to see that if it comes to it. Damn it. Why'd I say that now? I have to show off. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Square so, right. class features. Minus one with the staff. So, Let's go. As <laughs> all of you partake, which by the way, no ration right off. This guy got a Ooh. possum. You eat good. Do -do -do. We're uh, eating good. We yeah, got the it's, fine possum. It's, We're eating possum tonight, it's, Mom. <laughs> it is delicious. Like, I can't even state how, like, it literally tastes like pulled pork, beef, rabbit combo. It's really good. Hey, Monty, while we're yeah. eating, can Kai check up on Strigal? Sure, yeah. Uh, what does Strigal look like while he's eating or after he's done? He's been kind of alone, uh, kind of, like, just very careful and cautious about his bag. Kai's just going to walk up to him and kind of tap him on the shoulder to get his attention. Oh, uh, Master Valentinius? So is this something that you want to talk about, or are you just going to be quiet the whole time? What, what, what do you mean? I mean, you barely said anything since we got here. Yeah, it didn't really seem my place, no? Strigal, this would probably work with anybody else, but as somebody who's gone somewhere they don't want to be and clammed up because of it, it's not going to work with me. I'm just asking if you want to talk about it. Strigal's going to have a very blank kind of look on his face. As he was not expecting to be called out. <laughs> oh, um, I suppose then 
Uh, sure, I, I... I don't know. This is all... I remember talking to a few of my... You know, the other mages in the tower, and... They asked if I really wanted to go do this mission. It might be diff too difficult for me, and I started to believe that maybe... Maybe they were onto something. I don't... Kai, I, I don't know why I'm here. Is that why your heart wasn't in that fight? Because I've seen you fight before, and that wasn't it. Hey. A lot has happened since the war, and I thought perhaps that I was over it, and that going here to Dalvaria and trying to make some semblance of the war would, I don't know, give it some reason for why it ended the way it did, but... I don't know how you do it in truth. You, I assume, have left Mordorala for some time, and yet you all still seem to keep going. In truth, I haven't really been far much outside of Earthland. In that regard, our situations are different. I had to leave. I see. Strahl will kind of look at the egg. This also oh. is somewhat complicated things yeah you said to protect that with my life and it's just an egg and i know it's a griffin egg which is important to you guys but i didn't realize it was that important is there something i'm missing i was not born in hurtland i in truth don't fully know where i'm from but I was raised there and consider myself a member of their people, but uh, shortly after Taino died, I received a letter saying that someone knew where my birth parents were, and in truth, I thought somebody was trying to get under my skin, so I, I burned the letter. And in truth, it is also one of the very few things I now regret. Not that finding out who my birth parents would be would change anything about where I'm from, but I don't know. Ever since Tanor left, I failed to find a way to fill that gap of what's missing. If that makes any sense. Can I be honest with you? Please do. You might not be able to. There's never going to be a return to normalcy after something like that happens. Like, I can't even imagine it. And you're going to spend the rest of your life looking to fill the empty, and it's just not... The only thing that's going to fill the empty is your memories, and I don't want to say moving on, but just doing your best in memory of, of your partner. Maybe you're right, but I don't know. Maybe just trying my best, like you said, trying to find my place in all this. At least understand where I'm meant to be going, even if I can't find an exact reason for why things happened the way they did. You honestly might want to talk to Otho, too. He's been through a lot, and... I don't know, maybe he can offer you some perspective about how he gets through the day, but I talk to him as much as I can, and it's rough for him, too. This isn't the kind of thing you just get over, and it's, it's going to happen when you go to places that trigger you and bring up old memories, and... You can't clam up. I, believe me, I know better than anybody. I do it all the time, and I know it's the pot calling the kettle black, but that's why I can see it. And you can't do that. So if you need anything, you can lean on us. Or at least me. Uh, thank you, Master Valentinius. I was not expecting such a kindness, but it is welcome. As for me, I might be still a bit overcautious, just because this griffin means a lot to my people, of course, but in a lot of ways, this beast will be born in a place that it is not meant ne necessarily to normally belong to. In a lot of ways, I find similarities to it, and I hope, I hope it has an easier time than I did. Well, I, um, I won't take up any more time, but I have heard that they have got griffins all over the place, so... 
But who knows? Maybe it'll it'll share the wonderful natures of griffins with a place that wouldn't ordinarily see them. True. <laughs> But still, I appreciate the uh, assistance. I guess I didn't realize that I had things on my mind I needed to speak about. That being said, um, well, you've given me some hard truths. The sword must inevitably swing both ways. Okay, so he hands you back your... You know, I was actually really tired. I was going to go sleep. We could totally do this another time. <laughs> He's just going to mage hand this spellbook in front of you. Okay. Your cantrips. They weren't working before because you were attempting to cast them like someone cooped up in a laboratory somewhere. No, it, your magic is unique. Not unheard of, but certainly different than at least mine. Try with your semantic opponents not just using your hands, but your feet. Focus more on footwork like your brother does with a, a sword. It may make more sense to you then. I mean, it's, it's worth a try. Haven't been able to do it yet, or at least in a long time. I also took some liberties. Uh, on the other side of your spellbook, you will find a book of sea shanties from your home country. I noticed a few cadences within it that I assume bards used to assist in casting spells. Maybe they might help you. Did you actually talk to Otho? Because he just did the same thing before we left to come here. Uh, it looks like you are just as supported in this endeavor that, uh, than I am. If this is a conspiracy, I will find out. We just want you to be the best of you that you can be, whatever that means for you. Well, I, uh, I, I appreciate it. I'll, I'm going to try to practice. I'll give you a nod and kind of pick up his drink before kind of walking back to camp. And Kai will do the same. It's at this point that uh, a watch has been created, mixing both you guys with the rest of the denizens of the camp. However, after a long days of writing, you didn't realize how exhausted you are on the back of that boar. Uh, you all fall asleep to the far off sound of root crunching in the distance. And as you all fall asleep, the dangers of Delvaria still yet unknown to you. That is where we're going to end the session for tonight. Ooh. Yeah! Wow. Fight Landia! Packed session. I have two pages of notes. That hasn't yeah. happened in a while. The same. I, I'm like almost at three pages of notes. That's good stuff. I love it. Oh, a very fuck, dense yeah. lore space. So dense. So terse. The most dense. <laughs> <laughs> Density. I don't mean to be that guy, but after I get my name out, I do have to bail because I have to go. Somewhere yeah, we did go. We did go late. Yeah, sorry. No, it's fine. I didn't. I didn't expect the the shopping to take so long. I honestly was just like, you know, no one sent me anything, and I was like, okay. So I figured we'll figure it out when they get to Genjifa, and then there was talks of going there, and I was like, uh, or going to the city like in Hearthland. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, oh, yeah. it's all Blame fine to me. We only yeah. went over like half an hour, so yeah, it's fine. yeah. It didn't feel it didn't feel too packed. It was fine. Okay, nope. that's good. Yeah, in fact, let's go for another hour. Okay, I will kill you. you. Yeah, I have I a doctor's appointment in the morning. Fuck off. People got oh, stuff to do, I mean, so. I'd be down. I'm well, not on the East Coast. I got a 7 a.m. shit to do, so I've got Connor, a thing I need to do right now. Connor, whilst you start, I actually do need to use the bathroom real bad because I've been drinking this entire session. All right. So. You can start with Zito and Gaijin. Me too. Let's go yeah, around the corner and introduce ourselves. Gaijin Goomba, where can you find you? Trish, that TV says Gaijin Goomba every Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Central. Expect shoot and weeb. And that's me. Egg salad. Mark Allen Jr., where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me on Twitter.com at Mark Allen Jr. Here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming. Follow my cat bunny on Instagram at Chonk for Life. Check my Twitter. I had a lot of announcements over the last couple of days. I released a remix that I've been working on for over a year. I announced that I am going to be uh, teaching a voiceover workshop uh, on Saturday, September 23rd. Check that out. If you are interested, I'd, hap I'd be happy to have you. Uh, and watch anime and stuff. 
and then I'll see you on my stream on Friday when I do more music challenge. Okay, I have to go. Yeah. I love all yeah, of you. I see you later. Bye. 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 Uh, let's Good let's luck. go with Zito next. Then Zito, we're gonna find you. What are you up to? Twitch.tv slash Zito. Uh, my brand has completely fucking like just pivoted into something brand new. Uh. Toothpick, my little possum fella uh, that I've been drawing, is now my new mascot. He's got a 3D model, and I apparently now, I guess, I am a VTuber. Shrug, look left and right, look at the camera, right? I guess I am one now. You can find me on my streams on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, either between the starting hours of 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, my chat has thrown nothing but kindness my way so now i have to hurt myself for them in the form of doing really fucking wacky and stupid uh incentives friday uh friday afternoon however the first half of the stream will be cards because i haven't been able to play it in two weeks and i have a whole bunch of new people to introduce to it so hopefully we have a whole bunch of new people who will be playing cards it's free i promise you it's mario kart snes on on the doom engine and it's a completely free game so if that sounds appealing to you with fucking madness thrown into it come on by on friday afternoon then afterwards i have to make good on one of my incentives which is pokemon infinite fusion randomized nuzlocke oh my i don't ex Lord. i do not expect to survive past root what is it 28 that goes the one where you fight gary in the first one i don't expect to get past that that's how fucking brutal it can get. Even if you can merge Pokemon together, that still sounds like a fun challenge. I'm a masochist. I fucking drank Pep. Okay, I want to let you in on something. The last incentive was Peppa Pig World Adventures, and every time I got an achievement or was given ten dollars in bits and or donations, I had to take a shot of whiskey. I got to eighteen shots. Oh my god. But I beat that fucking game, and I'm never touching it again. You did it. I did it at what cost? For now. For now. I mean, I have to do Detroit Become Human. I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm not. I need money. I need to pay bills. That's me. Right on. Uh. Get out of here. Okay, bye. Thank you. I love you. Goodbye. Bye, Zito. One game. I'm glad to be back. Zan, where can they find you? And what are you up to? Um, I am occasionally, I suppose, located deep within the confines of a sad human fighter over on Monty's channel uh, on Thursdays Ooh. for some Dungeon of the Mad Mage. I think we're off this week because a few yeah. players are out, but normally I'll be there. Um, but if you want to see me, Monty Bosco, uh, play some D more D&D &D with some some other friends that you might also know, uh, then why don't you head on over to twitch.tv slash Uh This Monday will be our third session of this campaign that we're, we've are we been playing on. And um, if you want to watch the VODs of the first two episodes, uh, both of them are posted on my Twitter, at Zandy underscore Grimm, if you want to go there, or X Twitter, whatever it's called. Um, aside from that, Tuesdays, you already know where to find us. It's Halo Reach Lasso with Bosco, Level 1 EV, as well as Heart Artsy Heartsy. Uh, we're suffering for to try and gain some form of success, but it does feel good once we do it. And that is me. Yeah, that's me. Right on. And we're Bosco. We're going to find you. And what are you up to? You can find me at Ed Bosco V on both Instagram and Twitter, right here on twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco, where it's the normal cycle of streams that we out here. Tomorrow is going to be Throwback Thursday. It sounds like we're doing classic Street Fighter in celebration of Street Fighter 6, which is out now. So we'll be doing like original Street, like OG first Street Fighter. We'll go through Street Fighter 2 Champions Edition, all the stuff you're familiar with. Yeah, we're just going to be having a good time. Friday, more wrestling. Thursday, obviously, or rather Saturday, I can do days of the week. I'm not tired at all. Connor and I will be going through some more Yakuza. I'm excited to pick that back up now that he's back in town. Some more Like oh, yeah. Dragon. Uh, Sunday I'm off. Monday is going to be the start of Mass Effect with Monty Glue and Arkov over on her channel, which yeah. she'll tell you a little bit about. Obviously, then in the evening with Zan over with uh, Level 1 EV and Artsy Heartsy, we'll be doing some D&D &D at night. 
session three, and then we'll be right back on Tuesday for Halo Tuesdays and then back here for some more Unexpectables. That's me. Right on. Then we got Monty Glue. Where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash gone. Monty Glue. Oh my god. English. Uh, tomorrow, like I said, no Dungeon of the Mad Mage. I might do like another stream or I might take the day off. We'll see how I feel. Friday should be more uh, Final Fantasy 14. And then Monday is Mass Effect 2. The new one. The, the, the one that everyone really, really, really likes. So... <laughs> Um, hopefully we can get to that. Unfortunately, this past week I was uh, not feeling super great. So hopefully this week I feel maybe hopefully better. We'll see. Yeah, thumbs up. Touching it. Right on. Uh, and they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh... Friday is probably going to be some V Rising with uh, some people on my server. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can uh, subscribe to both my Twitch and be a member of my Discord and get access to the V Rising server that way. Uh, also, uh, like like we said earlier, uh, you can be playing some Yakuza Like a Dragon on Saturday, shortly before Gateway. And Sunday I'm playing through the Deus Ex series and going through Human Revolution we just started uh, last time. And man, I I, I I love Human Revolution so much. So good. Yeah. I, it was, it, to be honest, it was kind of hard to meme on it just because it was it's, it's really good. Yeah. The best part about it was I never asked for this. I never yeah, asked we, for this. Yeah, we would just say the line, Adam. <laughs> say the line. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It was. Um, also, check out the uh, Hydromancer spellbook out now. Uh, soon afterwards, however, we will uh, uh, be releasing the Geomancer spellbook on the DM's Guild. Uh, yikes. Uh, if you if you liked the Hydromancer spellbook, please leave a rating and a review. It really helps out with uh, being to locate the product on the website. Also, check out all my other stuff I got on the DMs Guild. Got a bunch of subclasses. Um, that's about it for me. Uh, this episode was brought to you in part by Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice. That's right, Die Hard Dice is your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories, and if you head on over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTED to save 10% on your order. We got Lies Dice as well. Uh, the official collaboration between the Unexpectables and Die Hard Dice. Pick them up now. Remember also, also to not to not eat the dice. That, that is uh, patently do not eat them. Unless you really, really want to. No, it's even if you want to. not legally liable uh, <laughs> for your decisions. Um, also, check out our spring. Uh, we got some new designs coming out uh, shortly. Yeah, pretty uh, soon. For very, very soon here. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Probably by the next time we... Uh, stream the unexpectables we will uh have an announcement for that might have a couple announcements actually but yikes um we also couldn't do this week in week out without all of your business ups it's uh, ups. where do we leave off uh we left off with mega waffles and uh callum draws those were the two that i didn't get to read and so they pop up Mega Waffles. Let's see here. Oh, I'll find it eventually. Oh, we're getting there. Oh, oh it's there. Oh, it's coming. Here we Good go. session, Monty, by the way. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Mega Waffles, thank you for the 10 bits. I hope, 
I hope the pacing went okay. I was like a little concerned that the pacing. Oh yeah. Up, but... uh, no, no, no. I think the pacing was fine. Oh, sorry. I didn't. We'll, we'll talk after. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, t we'll talk afterwards. We'll talk afterwards, like we usually do. Mega waffles. Thank you for the ten bits. Can Delvarian Knolls be modeled after dingoes? That's a thought. Maybe. Only if they, only if they steal my baby. Uh, then they could be dickheads. No, Strigal's holding a baby. No. <laughs> don't don't worry, Strigal. There's a perfectly good pregnant <laughs> kid. Yeah, uh, we don't have a griffin for you, but we have this, you know, pregnant lady's child. Is that <laughs> good? Callum draws the, the nine bits. As Canadian, back milk is more convenient than carton milk. I just... I... I and I, I don't know if that is necessarily true. Bring back glass milk. Just give us glass yeah, milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Zan. Bring back the milkman. Brings me milk. Gives me children. <laughs> what? It's like, whoa, the milkman's here. Suddenly my wife is with child. It's a miracle. Thanks, Milkman. Yeah, thanks, Milkman. Your special milk did the trick. <laughs> Burnout Vaughn, thank you for the 100 bits. Also, legit, so glad to catch an episode live after months and have a proper halftime show. Thanks for getting uh, me through a rough patch. Uh, sen Sentau Cry. Uh oh. Ah! <sighs> Thank you for the 200 bits. Not sure what the big deal is with bagged milk. I had that in elementary school in Southern California. Yeah, so did I. But it's just fun to make fun of people for being a little different in ways that are nonsensical. True. It's always fun uh, making fun of different people. Also, shout out SoCal. <laughs> Rare. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And Zen Lita, thank you for the 100 bits. To that woman, the spirit of Canada itself descended from on high to guide her. That's right. Uh, one of the four spirits of Canada. GGG Maximo, thank you for the 100 bits. All dress chips are amazing and they keep disappearing in my store. Probably because people are buying them. Delicious. Yeah. They're, they're a very popular, like, you know, that is the that is the hanging out with friends chip up here. I can't think of a single time I've hung up with friends and we got like food, like snacks, and like all dress chips weren't there. Lost me the robot, thank you for the five hundred bits. Only fancy deli is in Seattle for me, and it ain't cheap. Okay, but Seattle deli Seattle delis are also really good. Mm -hmm. I will say. Mm -hmm. Gamma Leo, thank you for the 300 bits. Ride the Rails, thank you for the 100 bits. When it comes to ketchup chips, y'all are acting like potatoes, vinegar, and ketchup don't go well together. People have ketchup with fries. Yeah. I will I say, I, I sometimes find ketchup chips just too sweet. Like that's my probably my biggest beef with ketchup I mean, chips. That's my thing with yeah. a lot of ketchups, too. Because not all ketchup's like yeah. that, but there are enough ketchups that are kind of sweet. I'm like, eh, you know, I'm good. Me, I'm a ketchup fiend, so I, I love ketchup chips. Uh, the Percocizer. Thank you for the 100 bit. Uh, episode title, Sandy Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of sand, though. It's dust. Like, that's the thing. In the desert. On a boar with a name. Uh, any Anyone who's... L like I guess geographically aware of uh, California's Death Valley. That's just what I assumed. That's just what I, I kind of visualized. Yeah, like Mexico, Nevada, and like Australia, like is what I think of in my brain. We're gonna find the Undertaker out here. Oh yeah, he's built from Death Valley, isn't he? I built. I've digged six holes for six souls in Delvaria, brother. <laughs> just works in the brother. That's how you know it's wrestling. Uh, I just I just always say brother whenever a wrestler says. <laughs> uh, uh, River over. Rat. He's just going over brother. 
<laughs> River Rat, thank you for the 100 bits episode title, Boar Hunt. Bell X, ah, thank you for the 39 months. Blizzards of Lizards, thank you for the 600 bits. Stopping in late, new work schedule, so I have to catch the VODs from here on out. Well, thanks for stopping by, Blizzards of Lizards. Another great name. Killer Chansey, thank you for the 10 bits. Episode title, Hot Headed Hooligans. Zen Lita, thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, Wayfinding. Sintao Cry, thank you for the 300 bits. Oi! Episode title, Wake up. Ah! <laughs> Episode title, Dance in the Desert. Dice Ruler, thank you for the 4 bits. My stitches are off now. Nice. Or, uh oh, depending on the situation. Magic Ninjago, thank you for the 100 bits. Thanks for the stream. Thank you for shopping by. Hopefully we brought you some semblance of comfort. Callum Draws, thank you for the 10 bits. Possums are just kobolds. Think about it. No, the baby possums are kobolds, and the dragon is the mama that carries them all around on their back. I was seriously trying to think of, like, what the, the ups... The up version of a possum would be, and I couldn't think of anything. Big possum. A giant dire possum. Dire possum, like a dire badger, a giant badger. Uh, <laughs> hog. Someone said hog rider for an episode title. That's cute. Oh uh, yeah. Sento, can I think of the one thousand bits? Zan, I've yet to watch your D and D stream, but I have them earmarked. Quick question: What's your policy? On. <laughs> I, I, I read and replied to it. Um, I'm not going to have any content that would be, I would probably consider any form of like requiring a trigger warning. Um, first episode is a little heavy, but nothing to do with like children. A little. Like yeah, it, okay. The first episode's heavy, but it's dealing with grief of like a late, late family member, not a, so, not a child. Fair, fair yeah, but enough, it, but fair all enough. of it was done to Evie, so it really balances out because it's oh. mean to British people. We took some comfort in the fact that it happened to Evie. Delvaria, Delvaria is, <laughs> Delvaria is not part of Australia. Delvaria is Delvaria. Math is math. Come on. Uh, Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, nobody going to take my pig. It's going to break the speed of sound. Nobody going to take my pig. It's big and fat and round. Ooh, it's an oinking machine. It's got everything. Like smelly musk and big old tusks and everything. <laughs> Amazing. You can't hear me, but I'm snapping. That's that's good. Callum draws thank you for the five bits episode title, delving into Delvaria. Uh, the, the additional five bits episode title, all aboard. And dice ruler, thank you for the four bits episode title, boar rider. Really? Ride. Someone, someone had a good one that I liked too. That was what happens in Delvaria. <laughs> oh, because Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. It's yeah, I, I kind of like that one, honestly. I'm good with it. Whole hog is another one people really like too. Oh my god, whole hog! <laughs> I whole love hog. that one. You want to go with whole hog? That's that's <laughs> my that's my vote right there. Is whole hog. Alright, we'll do whole hog. I see I saw that one a few times. I was writing it down, so I, I just I just wanna is. I just hope we eventually get to an episode that's just called Moist Critical. I think we did. Uh, we did already it. have we one, did. yeah. Is it smelled recently. like moist <laughs> amazing? No, I think we spelled it like moist critical as in like a critical hit. Oh uh, okay. I think, yeah. I think what was it? Was, it? It was recent. You were there. Yeah. It was within the last couple episodes. Oh, that's right. Okay, I thought it was a joke. I didn't know we actually did it. Okay. No, we did that. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we, did that. we did that shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who do we want to These guys raid? keep messaging me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we... Oh god. Uh, we have I have Thero and Arkov. on. Arkov is on. Ed, Arkov's doing Red Dead, which I it's cool. He's a he's a oh, he's a root and toot, not disappointment anymore. He's a he's cowboy. A rhinestone cowboy. He's a cowboy. He's no longer. He well, is, he's still. Yeah. And he's on camera. Yeah, you get to see him now. He's got a webcam. Oh, look at that you have to write, rate him. Can we look read that... Arkolf? Absolutely yeah. cute nerd. He looks exactly like I thought he would. That's amazing. All right, we're 
we are called. Uh, what should our raid message be? Uh, cute nerd. I was gonna say, we already done that before. Let's do whole hog. Whole oh, hog. Just no context. Whole, whole hog. hog. Whole hog. Yeah, whole hog. All right. Get out of here, you rapscallions. Peace. Regular scallions.